For the first time since 2010, the APSA Cape Epic visited series in uh, the Boerland and the uh, Baden Bockerfeld at the foot of the Witzenberg Mountain. Surrounded by the Matrusberg and the Skuberberg, it provided a wonderful uh, playground for the riders on stage one of the APSA Cape Epic as the journey continues for the riders. The Enger Kirk, the focal point of this uh, small farming community, a deciduous fruit farming area, but it is uh, also the home to the Absa Cape Epic for day one. Hello and welcome to our coverage of uh, the Absa Cape Epic once again. It is day three, stage two, the Queen stage ahead and what a day we're in uh, for here. It really is a beautiful morning and uh, I welcome Neil Gardner and Annika Langville who won 31 of the 40 stages you raced at the Absa Cape Epic. A quite an astonishing record uh, right at the top of the pile but uh, sitting here and enjoying uh, the race so far. Yeah, it's been super entertaining to watch the race. Um, it's uh, interesting to, for me to sit here on the other side of the lens and, and, and have a view of the action a little bit from a bird's uh, eye. Um, it's really good to watch. And uh, part of me makes me want to come back and, and be on the bike again. But for now, I'm... I'm comfortably sitting here and really enjoying it. Well, we're thoroughly enjoying your insight. It's wonderful, isn't it, to have uh, uh, the insight coming straight off, almost off the bike, as you were in the last Absa Cape Epic, and the winner as well there. Neil, today, uh, the Queen stage, uh, something uh, really to savour. We're really looking forward to seeing how the racing plays out. Yesterday, we, we saw the, uh, the marathoners come to the fore in the men's category, and in the women's category, we saw the cross-country riders really romp home with uh, and taking the line honours. So fascinating to watch how it all play out, how it played out yesterday. And also today, um, we're looking to, to see if it will be the same, more or less the same kind of result. Um, the Queen stage will certainly test all of the athletes. Well, it is a, a beautiful day, as we said. It's, uh, you can probably see. Uh, actually, we, we're not at the race village in series. We're at uh, the uh, venue for the grand finale here at uh, beautiful Val de Vie, just outside Pal. And uh, it is a wonderful setting. We'll be uh, bringing you every day from here, but of course, uh, taking you right into the heart of the Absa Cape Epic with our cameras, uh, the helicopters, the e bikes, and our static cameras on the route. So you won't miss a thing. Right, let's have a look back at yesterday. And uh, stage uh, one, the prologue in Cape Town on Table Mountain was muddy and uh, cold and wet uh, for many yesterday. Very different. A 98 kilometer stage, 1800 meters of climbing. And this is how it unfolded. The Absa Cape Epic is a magical African mountain bike race that sees 300 teams of two tackle 620 kilometers and a climb of almost 16,000 meters over eight grueling days. The challenging Western Cape terrain takes them from Cape Town to the grand finale at Val de Vie. Today's stage one starts and finishes in the fruit farming district of Ceres. Stage one is notoriously tough and the distance has rarely dropped below the 100 kilometer mark. But for the 2021 edition, it sits at 98 kilometers with 1850 meters of climbing. The crux of the ride is known as the dead man walking climb, followed by the treacherous pipeline descent. On the start line in third after the prologue are Canyon Northwave, second of BMC KTM and current leaders in the men's elite category, 91 Songo Specialized with Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers in the yellow zebra jersey. As the gun goes for the first stage of the 17th Absa Cape Epic, the leaders are with their closest rivals, BMC KTM and Canyon Northwave MTB. Both Bulls teams are also at the front, currently in fifth and sixth. A leave series heading off into the rocky wilderness of the Western Cape. In the women's category, Team Salusmed are in third. Second place are Faces CST in the dark red African leaders' jerseys. And Cape Epic newbies, Sina Fry and Laura Stiger of 91 Songo Specialized, are in the orange zebra leaders' jerseys. The start gun goes, and the women's pro category embark on the first marathon stage of the 2021 APSA Cape Epic. Bad luck at the beginning of the race for yesterday's second place team, BMC KTM. They have a mechanical problem with their derailleur and lose three to four minutes. Then a puncture to follow. They're out of the running for a podium today. 
In the early part of the men's race, the lead group stays together with several teams in the mix. However, as soon as they approach the toughest time of the day, dead man walking, it's Team 91 Songo specialised in the yellow jerseys who take the lead and set the pace. They win the Dimension Data hotspot at the top of the climb, followed by Bulls 1, Canyon Northwave and Bulls 2. The chasing group are joined by South Africa's Piger Eurosteel 2, taking the group to a total of four teams. They need to work together if they're going to catch the breakaway pair of Saru and Beers. The leaders are now descending the pipeline single track on the Isofontaine farm. These are some of the oldest mountain bike trails in the country. At the 70 kilometer mark, they finally catch the leaders in yellow and all work together to make time on the chasing group. As the leaders approach the finish line in series, a sprint finish is inevitable. For the final 10 kilometers, the pace is blistering. Usuba from Bulls 1 is the most experienced in this situation. It comes down to the final three kilometers where they jostle for position. As they round the final corner, the experience of Uber pays off as he and Schneller cross the line first, closely followed by Simon Stibjan and his partner Martin Fry for Bulls 2. Within the next three seconds, Canyon Northwave and the yellow jerseys also cross the line. It's an incredibly tight race. It's Uber's sixth victory at the Absa Cape Epic and the first for teammate Simon Schneller. The men's podium sees Canyon Northwave in third, taking them up to second in the GC. Second goes to Bulls 2, taking them to third overall. And first goes to Bulls 1, bumping them up to fourth, going into stage two. 91 Songo Specialized managed to hold on to the yellow leaders' jerseys and have almost two minutes on second place. The women's field stay together for the first 40 kilometers of the race. And it's Sina Fry and Laura Stigger making the first move on their way to the dead man walking ascent. 46 kilometers in at the top of the climb is the Dimension Data hotspot. 91 Songo Specialized has a lead of 54 seconds on Team Salus Med of Robin de Kruert and Ariane Luti, and Team Faces CST in third, one minute and 55 seconds behind. Fry and Stigger keep pushing on the technical descent and the following flat section. The Swiss-Austrian pair keep extending their lead all the way to the finish line and win the stage at the time of just under four hours and 35 minutes. Ariane Luti and Robin de Kruert from Team Salus Med cross the line in second, four minutes and 51 seconds behind on today's tough stage. The South African duo of Mariska Strauss and Candice Hill have a nightmare day on the Western Cape Trails. Strauss crashes twice, but they manage to limit the damage, crossing the finish line in third, just over 12 minutes behind the winners. The women's podium sees faces CST in third, Salus Med in second, and 91 Songo specialized in first. Fry and Stigger extend their lead in the GC to just under six and a half minutes. Well, another fantastic day on the Absa Cape Epic. The stage one results reflect that Uber and Schneller win the stage by a couple of seconds. They uh, held all the aces in that league group with two teams there and they made it pay in emphatic fashion. Sjewald and Storsek of uh, Canyon Northwave MTB just three seconds down and uh, Sarun Beers did enough despite Beers uh, having problems with his uh, drivetrain, picking up some grass in his cassette and not being able to use all his uh, gears in the last uh, 20 or 30 k's, but uh, managed to limit their losses and retain the yellow jersey. Base and Dutoy, the top finishers in the uh, Absa African jersey. Further down the uh, field, the uh, big losers of the day were Colombo and Zanotti. BMC KTM with that big mechanical at 10 minutes down on the day. And uh, Lorenzo Leroux and Loyanda Tobengunia, the Fairtree Cannondale uh, pair, are the leaders in the Xaro category in 34th place. Confirmation of the overall standings in a minute and 47. Andreas Sevalt, the world champion in uh, the marathon discipline, is uh, with Martin Storsek. One minute and 47 down. 208 to Fry and Steve John Bulls, too. Not far behind them are their teammates. Becking and Diaz are lurking just under six minutes behind. Poro and Ravensteiner. Well, they've got uh, work to do still. Uh, the marathon specialist from Italy, Trek Pirelli, eight minutes down at Detroit base in seventh.
Martina Fry and Laura Stiger were absolutely dominant. A really superb ride yesterday, just under four hours and 35 minutes, and they're putting four minutes and 51 seconds into Luti and De Kroot, the Swiss Epic uh, champions. Lil and Strauss of South Africa, the Apt Africa jersey wearers, had a tough day yesterday, but uh, 12 minutes down and two, just over two and a half minutes ahead of Morath and Redeka in fourth place at Computer Mania MTB. That's the uh, overall classification, six and a half minutes uh, there and thereabouts for Lutie and De Groot to make up. Well, it's a long race and uh, the uh, big question will be how Sina Fry and Laura Stigger, the cross-country specialists, the young uh, riders from uh, Europe, the Swiss and the Austrian, managed to sustain their efforts throughout the week. And uh, Lil and Strauss, 13 and a half minutes adrift, Morath and Riedeke. Stenehach and McDougall, 20 minutes down at the moment. And uh, second in the Absa African jersey category at this stage are Sarah Hill and Vera Lossa. They had problems yesterday with a big uh, puncture for Vera Lossa, 33 minutes down. So the uh, other categories are developing uh, nicely as well. This is the mixed. Uh, Laura and Sebastian Starr continue to lead the Virgin Active Mixed category quite comfortably, as do uh, Carl Platt and Albert Lacarta, the Bulls legends over Craig Uriah and uh, Andrew Duvenage of Ristonic in the Dimension Data Masters. But look at the Grand Masters. They really are firing out there. Bart Brenchens, Peter Vessels leading by just a minute and 16 over Bucher and Gerber with Heymans and Bresser. Three minutes and 23 down. You can bet that race is going to be red hot all the way around to Valdeby. There we go. So the uh, overall standings, big lead for uh, Virgin Actor mixed uh, leaders Stark and uh, Stark, Sebastian and Laura, 18 minutes is what Uriah and Duvenage have to try and make up over the next few days against some legends. Whilst Brenchens and Vessel are a minute and 28, five minutes back. The first winner, together with Carl Plant of the Apps Cape Epic back in 2004, Money Heyman's back racing with Carsten Bresser. The Apps African jersey standings at the moment. It's a very competitive competition, this, with many young uh, Riders in the mix here. Peter de Toy is 22. Eric Haynes is 20. And uh, Tristan Nokia is 20, as well as 22-year-old uh, Vessel Wurter. So young riders getting the opportunity to ride here at the Absa Cape Epic. Xaro Jersey leaders Lorenzo Larue and Luyanda Tobangunia have a handy lead, having two days under the belt. Xaro PWC pair in second place. FNB change of life. Uh, from the Valley of a Thousand Hills in KwaZulu-Natal, just over a quarter of an hour behind. Lil and Strauss are the leaders of the Abs African women's jersey category, ahead of Hill and Lossa, with uh, Haley Preen and uh, Tanya Rabi in, uh, Marie Rabi, pick your pardon, in uh, third place, the Land Rover Ladies. Stage two of the Absa Cape Epic. It is the Queen stage, and this is a day to savour. Uh, we always look forward to a, a stage called the Queen stage, Annika. Yeah, uh, just alone the fact that you know you, you will approach the Queen stage makes you a little bit more, um, yeah, uh, on your edge and really, really focused on what's ahead because you know this is supposed to be one of the hardest day of them all, and you want to get through this one really well, that's for sure. Old Gedo Pass will be a, a tester. The, the uh, Land Rover technical terrain is uh, going to be really rough and rocky as one would expect in the Witzenberg Valley. They go through the Witzenberg Valley, lots of farm, single track, uh, farm roads and single track, sandy. Um, it really is harsh, Neil. Yeah, this is a really tricky section in the middle between the two peaks that you see in the middle, the Witzenberg Valley section, and uh, local knowledge will really play a role here. We expect to see 91 Songo Specialized uh, Matt Beers taking the lead. Uh, he knows the terrain, and the local riders know the terrain. And let's not forget that the Bulls team have ridden these, they've ridden the Absecape many times. They will also have local knowledge. So 
Uh, riders like uh, from the t from teams like uh, Canyon Northwave will be at a disadvantage here. They will look to the others to see where the real key points are and uh, that will definitely put them on the back foot. And uh, coming right at the end is the wagon trail descent off the Witzenberg uh, Mountains down into uh, Tilbach and Saronsberg. And, and th that is uh, not to be underestimated. Uh, the Apsike Bebek has gone up there before, it's come down there, and uh, many a rider will tell you uh, what uh, lies in store in terms of the pitfalls uh, there. So it's got to be taken very carefully, particularly coming as it does uh, nearly 80 kilometers into a very, very tough day. What is significant about uh, the profile here, 2,100 meters of climbing, and yet there isn't really a monster climb there. So what that tells you, there's going to be a lot of short, punchy climbs, a lot of rough uh, climbs to deal with, and that's, that's, that'll take a toll. Oh yeah, for sure. This this terrain is so draining. Um, it's gonna be really a rough and tough day uh, out there. Especially the part, the middle part in the Wittenberg Valley can be really brutal and hot. Uh, it's not gonna be easy rolling. You need that power to get through this valley because the terrain is gonna sap every single uh, yeah bit of energy out of you. That's for sure. And once you've done that, you need to do this really long, demanding descent at the end, and you want to stay focused for that one. Absolutely. So they rolled away earlier this morning from uh, sunny, a little bit cool in series, but certainly a sense that perhaps at last summer might be arriving in the Western Cape. But don't get ahead of yourselves, because this is the Western Cape, and weather can change overnight. In fact, it can change in a few hours. Not so today, though. It looks all set fair. So they rolled away from the start. 98 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing in prospect. A day not to be uh, taken lightly in, by any stretch of the imagination. Liesel for the was down at the start uh, earlier today, catching up with uh, a lot of the riders and getting uh, a sense of what they can expect today. And I think there's some pretty nervous riders out there ahead of today's stage. Uh, on the start line of stage two of the Absa Cape Epic with Martin and Andreas from Team Canyon Northwave. Guys, how are you feeling stage two? You've had your toes dipped into your first Absa Cape Epic. How are we feeling? Uh, we feel great. Uh, well, we look forward for uh, an even harder stage maybe, like more climbing. And uh, we hope we get used to the ground more and more. And and get into the race and get to know the race and yeah i am looking forward for it now the conditions are expected to be quite hot out here today are you ready for that yeah we hope so i think it's it's better than the the, the yesterday morning when it was really cold now it's now it's better yeah of course the uh, uh, like during the race it will got more hot but yeah that's, that's the africa let's say so yeah now, having a teammate that's a physio, does that help along the way at all or after the race is completed, after the day is completed? Uh, <laughs> maybe it would, but we also have two more physios with us, so, yeah. So you actually just get to relax afterwards and get someone else to do the work? Yeah, I'm useless, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm here for racing, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we're going to wish you all the best as you head out into the start line. Good luck, have fun, guys. Thank you, thank you. Jordan, Matt, after yesterday's technical difficulties, you had uh, some grass stuck into your derailleur. You couldn't change gears. You were stuck in one gear for the last, what was it, 20 Ks. How are you feeling today? Yeah, it was just a, it was a slight problem, but um, we managed to consolidate and make it work. But yeah, today is a really nice stage. We know, well, I know most of it from Tanko Trek and stuff, so... It's nice to know what to expect, um, and then I can also let Jordan know on key parts. So. Jordan, that must be the, the nice part, having a partner that's done the route a number of times and knows some part of the route so he can advise you. Yeah, for sure, it's a really good advantage uh, that Matt uh, knows the, the track. Uh, yeah, he can uh, let me know when, uh, when we have to push to be in front at the right moment and at the right place, so yeah. Um, it looks like a, a hard stage, but yeah, we, we try to enjoy as much as possible. Well, good luck and we'll see you out there, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Getting ready for stage two with our current ABSA African jersey wearers, Philip and Peter. How are you feeling ahead of today? Yeah, we're feeling good. It's uh, still early on in the, in the race, so um, legs aren't hurting that much yes, but, uh, yet, but um, I think, yeah, it's the queen stage today and the transition stage from Sirius to Tolbach, so 
We're in for a big one and uh, I think their legs will start hurting after today. So for newbies watching the Absa Cape Epic, what is the Queen stage? I think it's the, they, they rate it as the toughest stage on Epic, so um, yeah, it's a solid, <laughs> solid stage. Now it's normally not a stage that you get on stage two, it comes a little bit later on. How are you feeling about having it so early on in the event? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's interesting, uh, it's going to get everybody tired <laughs> quicker in the race. But um, yeah, this yeah, it's uh, our fourth stage five will be queen stage. But uh, yeah, it's awesome getting it in so early. It's uh, a bit of a change up. Well, wishing you guys all the best and good luck out there. Perfect. Thanks. Yes. Well. So early on, this is earlier today, uh, Jose Ruiz uh, had a broken chain just up that little climb. I mean, really uh, a couple of kilometers from the start and uh, snapped the chain, putting a bit of power, perhaps not quite in the right to gears. He was going up, get the chain breaker out and sort this one out. Uh, Annika, uh, it, it, easy to say don't panic, but when this happens now, yeah, 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 yeah. It's really not the moment that you want this. I mean, you don't want this at any point in the race, but especially now you can see everybody just riding away from you and it uh, can be quite demotivating. It's all about getting that one fixed nicely and then slowly ride yourself into the race again and up the ranks because now there will be a lot of traffic on the trail and you need to just really make your way forward in a good way. Right, as the week progresses, we'll ask Anna to give us, Annika to give us a, a description of exactly how they'll fix the broken chain. <laughs> Push the pin through, bring in the uh, link, magic link, it, 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 and, and it's remarkable how quickly it's fixed as well. Yeah, well, you need to, Sometimes. Be, you need to be prepared for yeah. it. You need to know exactly uh, how to fix it, otherwise you're in big trouble. If you haven't practiced beforehand or have some sort of basic knowledge about how your, your bike works, um, it's not good. That's yeah. not the way you want to approach this race for sure. Right, we're getting images of the uh, women's group heading out uh, onto today's stage two, a fitting queen stage indeed. It is 98 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing and a challenging day for all. Let's hear from some of the protagonists at the start line today. Sina, Lara, how are you feeling ahead of today's race? Yeah, we're feeling good. Um, we had a quite good sleep and we we're looking forward to today. And it is the Queen stage, so it's uh, quite a hard one out there. How are the nerves ahead of that? Is it really the Queen stage? Already, yes. No, but like it's uh, the fifth stage with 2,900 meters of altitude. Well, apparently it is today considered the oh, Queen okay, stage. I didn't know that, so. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a surprise going into the event. Good luck, have fun. Robin, Ariane. Great team riding yesterday. How are you feeling ahead of today? Yeah, obviously you start to feel the stages accumulate and uh, sleep was short, but good. And yeah, just looking forward to it. I know it's a beautiful route. It's probably one of my favorite um, stages um, out there. So yeah, really looking forward to it. And it is the Queen stage and it's quite early on in the event. It normally comes up a little bit later. Ariane, how are you feeling about it being so, so quick into the event? Well, I think it's good for us that it makes the other legs a bit more tired, so <laughs> we won't have as much uh, punchiness of the others anymore, I think. Um, but yeah, we, we just take whatever comes at us and really tackle it with confidence and yeah, give our best every day. So, can I ask what the race plan is for today? Is that a, the best kept secret out there? <laughs> Well, we, we just do our thing, you know, like really stay smooth, um, obviously try save energy where you can save energy, really concentrate. I noticed yesterday you really have to be focused all the way through, never crash. Um, so that's actually the biggest game plan of today. Well, good luck. Have fun out there. We'll see you on the finish. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, some very uh, interesting comments there from Ariana, and that's from, from a woman who's written this and won this so many times, but still cognizant of the most important uh, factor here is be safe and, and make sure you don't get yourself into trouble. It really is. It, it really often um, pays off to, to sometimes back off a little bit and make sure you really get through without any problems, any mechanicals. You can see how easily you can snap a chain if you, 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 you're too stressed about finding the right gear and all of a sudden you, you, know, you, you push your pedals really hard while, while trying to swap gears. It's the tiny things like that. You can, if you avoid that, you stay smooth and it really pays off in the end. If you have to fix a mechanical, 
you know, minutes fly by so quickly, and that's minutes you have to make up for. Well, this is the that was the lead uh, men's group just onto the first really uh, rough terrain, and, and it, immediately you see what today is going to be about. Even on these these uh, farm roads through the orchards here, um, this is as smooth as it's going to get for these riders until they sort of s probably swing past Tilbach and uh, onto Saronsburg. But it is going to be a really brutally hard day. Interesting to hear Sina Fry say, "Is it the screen stage?" <laughs> um, that's how they, you know, th their focus is each stage. We take it on. Yeah, there's more climbing on a stage to come, but uh, it's the terrain. That's what, what makes us so tough. It really is the terrain. Today, the race is not only against your competitors on the bike. It's just as much a race against the, the terrain here uh, because it's so rough. You can see here, there's really not a lot of smooth sailing, smooth cruising. Um, so it's really going to pay in to the favor of the riders who can keep a constant uh, pressure on the pedals um, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how uh, the team uh, 91 Stunko Specialized uh, women are going to do here today because you need to stay, have a lot of uh, power to get through this terrain. Well again this is uh, what it looks like the Altgeide Pass uh, going up towards the Witzenberg Valley out of the beautiful series uh, valley and uh, rough and loose it's going to test everything today Neil. Well, you could see the terrain, the, just the surface of the, of the trails was covered in those very small rocks that uh, can roll around a bit. Uh, riders will be struggling for traction and it really is a, a full body workout. And Annika was talking earlier off air about that, uh, about that full body workout just, um, and, and how demanding it really is. It really, really is. I mean, it, it's so energy uh, consuming this terrain. Um, because you're not only pushing the pedals with your legs, you're kind of using the entire body to stay upright and sometimes your bike will dance all over the, the trails because the rocks will, will roll um, underneath you um, and you need to, to use that energy to, to kind of you know, stay upright. Um, and towards the end of the sta stage like this, you're just tired. You, I mean, your whole body is just exhausted. As uh, we heard Martin Stosek say, he was too tired to, to, to uh, tend to his partner in terms of the uh, physio. He is a physio. And uh, those were visuals recorded a little bit earlier. And this is now live. The uh, riders, we believe, have gone through the second water point. And uh, that is at Velchemien at uh, just under 50, about 47 kilometers in. So this is the riders on this brutally, brutally hard trail. We have a large group of main contenders in uh, right now at the front. And uh, the first water point we noticed that the riders went through, there was 13 teams that were all in touch. And when we hit the Land Rover technical terrain, the start of the Land Rover technical terrain, there were really only, it looks like there were only, um, there were only six teams or five teams in the front. And those teams included Canyon North Wave, both Bulls teams, Buff Scott, and of course the race leaders, 91 Songo Specialized with Trek Pirelli, the ever dangerous Trek Pirelli team, very much in touch. Didn't have such a good day yesterday, Trek Pirelli, but today they're looking to consolidate and make it work for them. And looking at the checkpoints at water point two, and water point two is at 45, the 45 yeah. kilometer mark. So at the 45 kilometer mark, the teams that were in touch, seven teams in touch with the lead. We're at the Bulls, both Bulls teams, in fact, and Canyon North Wave, Buff Scott, Mountain Biking, 91 Songo Specialized, the race leaders, and Trek Pirelli, and Pygo Eurosteel, the second team, but the team that are currently in the Apps African leaders' jerseys. Right, we caught images there. The Bulls are no doubt feeling very confident and very uh, happy about their performance because first and second yesterday, they moved up uh, nicely on the GC as well. And uh, so they are nicely positioned again with two teams in the, the key area there. Got the feeling Canyon Northway mountain bike, Andrea Sivalt and Martin Storsek are keen to make a, a statement today and uh, put their names uh, right at the top of the uh, leaderboard, you feel? Well, they've had uh, two good days in a row where they've been very much in touch with the leaders. The time difference on GC is not, is not huge. They're still very much in touch. It's 1 minute 47 on the general classification. And the top four teams are all within two minutes 30 of each other, which is dangerous for 91 Songo Specialized. 91 Songo Specialized, the race leaders, will need to make it work for themselves today. They want to extend that lead. 
and put themselves in an even more comfortable position because two and a half minutes is not enough to rest on your laurels. Absolutely. Beautiful terrain, isn't it? It's absolutely spectacular. Stefan Sam is out there on the e-bike. Uh, we're watching from above. But Stefan, uh, we've talked about this terrain, but you're right on the bike there. What's it like? At the moment, it's almost we're at kilometer foot, uh, no, 51. And we're hitting one of those classic It's just perfectly built. Not sure if the riders are having as much fun as us on e-bike. But it looks everyone's pretty happy at the moment with the speed. No attacks. Actually, Team Bull won a lot of time from the front. But maybe just to make sure there's no real attacks. Thanks very much, uh, Stefan. I mean, it, it is uh, the, the pace. Uh, it, it is difficult to comprehend watching where we are, just how fast these uh, riders are going down. I mean, it really is. Uh, the terrain and uh, we've talked about the gradients as well mm. they're going incredibly fast they are they really really are and now we just caught a glimpse of the actual terrain and you can see it's rocks uh, and a lot of sand and never something where you can just cruise you need to put the power on the pedal pedals all the time and it's a really st uh, smart strategy for the team bulls here to be at the front because it's, there's no room for overtaking here and if they can control the pace for a really really long amount of time that's a really good strategy and uh, stefan so i'm noting that as a three-time winner of this race he's fully aware of how the tactics play out especially on the narrow trails great to have him on the uh, broadcast team with that inside knowledge of exactly how the racing works in these sections he knows it well and uh, when they hit the open road and back into the trail, bulls have the whole shot and have control of the pace. Interesting again, there's uh, Rabensteiner and uh, Poro join that group at the back end there. South Africa's uh, Paga Eurostil, Philip Ace and uh, Peter de Toy. Quite high up in the string there. Uh, yesterday they, they went out hard. They were hunting that dimension data hotspot and it didn't quite work out for them, but they fought hard to get back into the group and then lost time again but it's all part of building i mean philip base is a, a very experienced after cape epic rider whilst his partner uh, peter de toy is a young man making his journey on the on his uh, first apps at cape epic so it's going to be a, a, a journey of exploration for the combination and one that uh, they'll they'll certainly learn from but uh, they're putting themselves that that they're the absa africa jersey leaders but they're also very keen on getting onto uh, the podium as well also yeah hans becking and uh, rosa diaz of uh, Buff Scott in, in this uh, group as well. Now Hans Becking, an accomplished mountain biker on the cross-country scene and the World Cup scene. And Jose Diaz on great form, having come third in the Marathon World Championships recently. Sweeping through the uh, natural vegetation here on these wonderful trails. And it is, uh, it's going to be notable how the terrain will change as the Absa Cape Epic makes its way around this beautiful Western Cape all the way to Val de Ville. And that is what you know, one of the biggest challenges uh, facing any rider coming out here is uh, when you're sitting uh, in the United States or Europe and you haven't ridden out here before and you, you're reading about the description of it, well, uh, you know, single track is one thing to you, but it's a very different thing out here. A wagon trail is one thing uh, in, in the United States, but it's a different uh, trail here. The harshness really is brought home uh, firsthand when they ride these trails. Yeah, these trails certainly are very different to, to what you find in Europe. Um, here, it's, uh, it's really rough and loose and sandy and not very groomed uh, some of the times. I know we will see um, very different characteristics of the trails throughout this, this week, but a trail like this, to me personally, is like very iconic, typical South African trail. Rough and just really, really untamed. Beautiful to watch, isn't it? These uh, top riders in the world taking on stage two of the Absa Cape Epic, the Queen stage, as they head to Saronsburg. Last time we were there was in 2016, onto the dam wall, some relief to, out of the single track. But uh, beautiful images coming from uh, the uh, 
area as they head into the Witzenberg Valley, which is a bowl but that straddles between Ceres and Tulbach. And it's a it's a sort of almost an isolated bowl, lot just some a lot of big farms in that, that area, deciduous fruit farms. Uh, mainly and and wine farms, but uh, it really is a, a sort of isolated area. You don't, you don't go to the Witzenberg Valley without going to visit someone or going to ride your bike there. You can't drive through it. The only way out when you go in from the Siri side is down the old wagon pass the other side. So uh, that, it's the harshest way to experience this, this this valley. Yeah, it really is. And I remember doing it back in 2016. The heat in this valley is just uncomprehensible. I, mean, I think today it will not be as extreme as it could have been, uh, but still you need to really make sure that you, you hydrate well and you remember to hydrate a little bit ahead of the point where you start feeling thirsty because once you start feeling thirsty and uncomfortable, it's, it's too late. So you need to, to really be smart and think about the entire stage, especially at this point now. Well, they are riding at the moment uh, through some uh, wonderful terrain that, that uh, belongs to uh, two of the riders, or one of them in particular who farms there at the moment, uh, Hannes Hanukom and his brother Saki Hanukom. They're riding their 10th uh, Absa Cape Epic together as a, a, a brother team, and they're, they're looking to finish their first or their 10th uh, Epic as a, as a team of brothers, which is unusual, very, very unusual. In fact, it'll be the first time. Uh, but this is uh, Belchemin, the farm of Hannes and Saki Hanukom. Hannes is responsible for a large portion of these trails that they're riding through in the Witzenberg Valley. And uh, we managed to catch up with them ahead of stage number two. Hannes, Saki, today's route, most of it is through your farm. So you know this like the back of your hand. Yeah, yes. we're supposed to. I hope so. so. I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage because you know, you know what's coming. So. <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah, it's a privilege to ride our, on our own farms and yeah, we're going to try and enjoy it. Tell me what the riders can be expecting out there on those trails. Yeah, a lot like, like yesterday, um, except it's, it's maybe a little, more, a little bit more flowing. And uh, yeah, but a uh, um, little bit of everything, yeah, the diversity is, is great. And for you guys, how are you feeling? What's the race plan? Uh -huh. Most plan try and stick to these guys, just get to town and then just ride our own pace. <laughs> no, for the first 30, 30 k's we don't really know much of it, but after that we, we're in our comfort zone, yeah. And then you really, just go steady. And then you'll come out and play. <laughs> yes, come out and play, yeah. <laughs> Have fun guys, we'll see you out there. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Santa Cruz Masters, Hannes and Saki Hanukom, two characters. Uh, uh, deep ingrained in the Absa Cape Epic. Wonderful story. Yeah, two really great guys. Mm. Um, I feel really happy now that I see them. Uh, when I did my first ever stage race here in S South Africa at the fall of 2013, uh, I remember that Arian, uh, my partner back then, and I, we ended up riding a lot of the time kind of around them. We would pass each other. And you know, when you do that for seven or eight days in a row, you, you start to feel, uh, build a little bit of a, a bond. With, you're not riding together, but you, yeah. you just, you know, you know exactly how much you, you both suffer. So two really, really great guys. They are. They really are fantastic and they're wonderful for the sport of mountain biking uh, to have farmers uh, who are so uh, connected with the sport and keen to uh, offer us uh, as mountain bikers the opportunity to ride through their lands. And, and you know, the Hanukoms are just an example of uh, landowners, farmers all over the Western Cape and indeed South Africa who have opened their farmlands. Now, here's our look at the leading women. And guess who's in front? The orange jerseys. Uh, Sina Fry, Laura Stiger, followed by uh, Robin de Kruit and a whole bunch of the uh, women flying down and a couple of the uh, Masters men here. So there's uh, been an integration into this, uh, this uh, women's group. Yeah, and that's um, sometimes a little bit the challenging part about uh, the women's race is uh, the, the, the nature of the course sometimes makes it impossible to have like a completely separate uh, women's race and we see an example of this right now um, but sometimes on a single track it's just not possible to overtake and you, if you kind of enter the single track in this uh, order it stays the same kind of throughout um, I just don't hope that a gap will open up uh, too much here between the women because of the men I'm sure it's, it's all good we'll see when we get back uh, with more detailed uh, pictures here but we could see that that one women's team was actually split up by some, some that, men. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, that is that can be a, a really tricky situation. And I know mm. it's happened in, in, in the past where 
um, teams have been separated. And uh, it, it, I know in one particular case, it did cost them a, a time penalty because they got so badly separated, they came through to the, the checkpoint just after the single track, and uh, they were more than two minutes apart. That's mm. uh, unfortunately part of uh, what, what happens in, in uh, mountain bike stage racing. You've got to be so vigilant and to make sure where your partner is at all times so that those uh, sort of things don't happen. Indeed it is. And the rules are firm with the in the women's category. That there is no drafting allowed of riders outside of your category. And um, for the rest of the race, it's uh, there is a, a rule that states that there is no interference allowed with the women's race. So uh, rules aside, it does happen. But uh, it is clear the riders do know that there is no interference allowed with the women's racing. Uh, it is unfortunate in the in the narrow sections, very often there's a, there's a lot of politeness that goes on in the trail where uh, the women's category riders are allowed through. The, the, the deference of the riders is, uh, it does, does shine through, luckily, and um, we look forward to see exactly who's at the front here. I think this looks like, it's, it looks like Urs Huber at the front. Yeah, I think it's Urs Huber. The pace. Yeah, Simon Schneller, and then Philip Bass, the Piger Eurostils in there, then Jordan Saru and Matt Beers, uh, Peter Detoy, Martin Storsek is in there as well. It's always fascinating to see the uh, the speed of the riders up this section. It's obviously a very steep climb. And uh, in terms of the physical effort, they are most likely going full out, but they're creeping along at four kilometers an hour. Just an idea of how tough this terrain really is. Yeah, yeah. and you can see the riders are like, they're really working their entire body. It's it's a full body workout this and it's it's really what adds up at, towards the end of the, the stage today is like the full body workout. It's it's so draining. Yeah, so that massage at the end of the day is, is critical. Were mm -hmm. you one who, who always had a massage at the end of every day? Yeah, it also becomes um, a part of your daily routine. It's both the physical recovery, but just as, as much mentally. You get to lie there on the table for 45 minutes or an hour or how long you prefer. Uh, just to really, you get to zone out and, uh, and sometimes it's also really, really nice to do a little bit of debriefing with your physio uh, because the physios most often are, are like really encouraging and, and it's like having a little bit of a, a session here uh, just to, to debrief and get everything out of your system. Um, or you can simply just lie there and just close your eyes and, and be still. It's really what you prefer, but this this little space is yours and you can really use it how you want to. And it's, it's good to have that. So the, the race today, let's, let's just focus on, on this, this men's race because we're having a look at the, uh, the yellow jerseys there. Uh, 91 Songo Specialized, Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers have a minute and 40 seconds over Andreas Sirvolt and Martin Storsek. Two minutes and eight seconds over the Bulls of Fry and Steve John. How's this going to unfold? I, I suggested earlier that the that, that Canyon North Wave are going to try and uh, perhaps be a bit, bit, bit aggressive today, or is this still too early in, in the race? It's hard to tell, really. I think at the moment uh, we've got some really narrow trails. Whoever is in touch with the leaders right now has got a good chance of, uh, of finishing with the front riders. So it all depends on how, it, how the attrition plays out after the Witzenberg Valley section. My, my reference to earlier in the race meeting more in terms of the days, you know, the, the, you know, minute and 47, they'll maybe try and nip back a couple of seconds there, not not go full out yet until later in, in the in the week. As uh, now, yeah, we with the the women out around uh, Luti on the front and in the middle of that uh, sandwich, uh, Salusmed sandwich, uh, the 91 song goes specialized. You can see still with the men being here, all the women are, uh, are together. And if they were to, to hit a more uh, easy rolling part, I'm sure the women will get all, all together, back together, and, and the men will kind of separate the, themselves from the, the women's race. But here on the trails, uh, the women can still kind of see each other, all of them, because every now and then the, the trail will kind of uh, wind back uh, towards itself. So vision here is, is, is quite good and, and it's easy for the, the women's teams a little bit further back to still see the leading women's teams, which is for the head is a good thing because you know you're still there. Yeah, we had uh, in that little image of the, the ladies on the, on the, on the ground there, Songa, 91 Songo Specialized, Salusmed and Faces CST were all within uh, that group. Uh, there may have been a bit of a gap back to the next team on the on the road. We didn't see who they were. Could be Computer Mania MTB, um, Adelaide Morata and Sheree Redeker, Jenny Stenach, Amy McDougall, 
They are in fifth overall going into today's stage. Liv Lapierre racing Sarah Hill and Vera Lossa in sixth place. Well, we do have some timing information out on the course. And at that section, at the 36 kilometer mark, just at the start of the Land Rover technical terrain, we, uh, we saw Ariane Luti and um, that's Team Salisman, Ariane Luti and Robin de Kruert and 91 Songo Specialized and Faces CST pretty much in touch. Faces CST a little bit of a gap back and a larger gap back to Computer Mania and Fairtree. So everyone more or less in touch. We did see a little bit of a gap, but uh, from the images we saw earlier, it looks like that gap was closed after the start of the Land Rover technical terrain. We're waiting for them to reach the water point two, which is the 45 kilometer mark. And then we'll know more about the status of the race. That's the women's race and the men's race have gone through there a while ago and flowing down this uh, beautiful trail. What a beautiful trail it is. Wow. And interesting uh, in the women's field, uh, I'm sure the, the course or the route would have offered good opportunity for Team 91 Sunco Specialized to, to go first into the single track and really uh, apply pressure. Um, and it seems like they're not applying that strategy today, uh, playing a little bit more conservative. Um, interesting for the racing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this one unfolds. Well, we did hear Sina Fry say at the start of the day, oh, is this the Queen stage? And, in, you know, used to say that at some stage she might think, hang on, why is this the Queen's? Why is it the Queen stage? If there's mm. 2,900 meters coming on stage five, I thought that was the Queen stage. That's going to be tough. What makes this the Queen stage? So there may be a look. Just, let's take this a little bit easier and ex find out what it's all about mm. before we mm. we put the hammer down. They did say yesterday, being out front, um, they, they found themselves out on their own quite a little bit earlier than they, they were expecting. So. And yeah, and they made it look easy, uh, but for sure they were working so hard. I mean, we could see them. Every time we saw them, they looked like they were going flat out in a, a cross-country race. And this was a marathon stage. So for sure, they, they worked really hard yesterday. Tell you what, who else worked really hard is the crew, the team who built this trail. Wow, it is absolutely extraordinary. Hannes Anakom, uh, who we heard from earlier, and uh, they've uh, been, he and his brother, but predominantly Hannes, but Saki's been involved as well in helping uh, to build these trails. And they are just... Uh, fantastic uh, giving the riders the opportunity to explore the mountainsides and the uh, terrain in the, the the very harsh and quite remote terrain of the Witzenberg Valley which is where they are now really really uh, spectacular at uh, the uh, Witzenberg Valley this is back uh, at the finish line it is indeed I was just having a look uh, uh, the Winterhoek Mountains surrounding the uh, Bauerle Tilbach there, and that is uh, Saronsberg awaiting the arrival of these riders in some considerable time still because they've got a lot of riding still to do to get to this uh, place. But it'll be a great celebration for all those running across the finish line at uh, beautiful Saronsberg. The last time we were there was in 2016, and uh, the uh, race has been there on two other occasions before 2016, 2011 and 2013. And uh, they'll be back there again, as I said, uh, today. So it is a beautiful uh, wine farm. Uh, relatively young in South African terms. 2004 was their first vintage, uh, Saronsburg. But they've welcomed the Apps Cape Epic and provide a wonderful uh, opportunity to uh, explore their terrain and their, their farmlands. So... Look at this. This is not a helicopter. It's a very small helicopter that isn't piloted by a person. And we're looking forward to seeing what footage the drones get for us in the stage two. Live drone Let's footage. See if we can find the riders. Absolutely amazing. We can find a horse or two, I think. Um, but this, yeah, gets you into the uh, forest with some skillful flying. You have to have a license to fly one of these uh, as uh, these great pilots do. And uh, this is the sort of terrain in the single track. Soft sand in, in these uh, pine forests. Uh, that'll be uh, the terrain they're going through at high speed. And if you hit a corner in, in that soft sand at, at high speed, it can be uh, destabilizing at times. We saw it a bit yesterday going through the orchards of Eerselfontein, occasionally hitting that uh, sand, sandy sections. 
But there's not much sand here. This is the rocky sections. This is Stefan Sam with uh, us on the e-bike. And uh, following the Paiga Eurosteel 2 team of Matthijs Birkus and Gertains. This is the ladies with our drone. Just disappearing. No, in fact, it wasn't that. We are, we are expecting them to be coming through this little pine forest very shortly, uh, women's uh, teams. This stretch here is really, really nice. Uh, although you have loose sand, you also have the shade provided by the trees. And it can be quite refreshing just to go into the shade for a little while to, to cool your body temperature just a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. So it's still Ariane on the front of that uh, group. With the 91 Songo Specialized tucked in behind it. But yeah, one, two, uh, three. I think there's a, there's a rider in there who may be separated from his teammate. There's uh, Laura Stigger and uh, in fact, there is Robin. So Robin and, and uh, Robin de Groot in fourth place are in at the front of the group. And then uh, 91 Songo specialized in the middle there. But really smart move here by Ariane to take the front. Uh, being here, she can really control the pace um, and make sure that uh, Team 91 Songo specialized doesn't get too much of a, a gap here. So that's, that's good riding. You see a lot of uh, tactical riding going on here. Out and of the single track opportunity to uh, eat and drink yes and you can see maybe that the riders are starting to feel the first two days now as soon as we got out here on the on the tarmac that would be a good uh, opportunity if you wanted to, to put in an attack and try to get away but everybody's sitting up nobody's really taking initiative showing that they're saving as much energy as they can they really really want to get through this one uh, nicely and it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds as we, as we will make our way out of this valley uh, towards the second big peak of the day before the, the final um, descent into the finish line. I I'm sure we will see some moves uh, later on. Back with our men's team still on this rugged, rough trail in the Witzenberg Valley. Two hours and 23 minutes of riding and uh, we'd be guessing, but probably around about 60 just over 60 kilometers of the 98 done and uh, as we said earlier not a, you know the, the climbing is uh, not as obvious as on uh, perhaps yesterday when there were some uh, dead man walking climb was a seriously long uh, ascent of six kilometers there's nothing quite like that today but a lot of uh, short steps all the way into and out of the uh, Witzenberg Valley and around the surrounding mountains which will take a heavy toll on the legs considering they've already had the prologue on Table Mountain and then uh, yesterday's stage. And the fatiguing factor is something that's going to come into play increasingly as the week progresses. And yes, Servalt, the world champion in there. And uh, it's Samuel Poro and Fabian Ravensteiner of Trek Pirelli. Ravensteiner, the Italian marathon champion. Lovely to see the national colors. Hans Becking is the Dutch national champion. He's uh, also racing here. We won't see the South African marathon champions colors uh, today because uh, Matthew Beer is wearing the uh, SS yellow jersey today as a race leader with uh, Jordan Saru. Yes, the uh, race leader's jersey in a race always takes precedence over whatever other jersey the riders are wearing. And uh, you know, it's the, uh, the riders who are the fastest overall on general classification and 91 Songo Specialized have got a commanding lead in the race. It's not decisive. It's not like they can rest on their laurels or anything like that, but they they look like they are the dominant pairing, and uh, but they will be challenged certainly by both Bulls teams who are very close on general classification. And of course, Canyon North Wave, the dangerous, uh, you could say dark horse team because they are rookies. They haven't ridden this race before. But they'll be... Uh, be looking to put their marathon experience to um, to, to good use and challenge the 91 Songo Specialized pair who have ridden this race before. Jordan Saru uh, has ridden it once before, and Matt Beers, of course, experienced both in this race and on these trails. Well, they've had the uh, Land Rover technical terrain, and, and as we're seeing now, it's uh, this valley, the Witzenberg Valley, is only 20 kilometers or so of, of uninterrupted single track. Uh, so the, the positions uh, are going to be pretty much set for a long period. Uh, these riders, not too many opportunities 
to uh, pass on these trails. But if you talk about rookies, and, and, and rightly so, really because they haven't done the Apsi Cape Havoc before, but to call the world champion and uh, his partner the rookies. But that's what it, the, the, the fact is that they, they are first timers in this event. So, yes, they have lots of experience as marathon racers, but they have uh, no experience in this race. And as we know, this race does stand out uh, uh, particularly from, from most others. Speaking to most of the riders who've, uh, who've done the Absa Cape Epic, they all say the same thing. The Epic is different. Annika, you've done uh, a lot. Um, it stands out. It really stands out. Um, just because it, the terrain is so different and uh, there's so much more that goes into it. Uh, you need to know how to prepare for this, what to be um, alert of. Yeah, it really keeps you on your toes. How important is, is that preparation in terms of being in South Africa? As we uh, see stopping at the water point, the Grand Masters uh, leaders, that's Bart Brenchens and Peter Vessel, stopping to pick up uh, bottles. A look over their shoulders just to make each is okay and, uh, and see where their rivals are, because this race is very, very tight. Now, a little bit of lube for uh, Bart Brenchens' bike. And there comes the chasing pack. And they're off. They're off, yeah. You can see Team 91 Sunker Specialized happy to get a little bit of draft here from the Team Sellersmith. Uh, Robin de Court here looking good in, in the front. I would assume that uh, Robin de Court right now, she's not going full speed. You can see she even has uh, enough uh, energy here to just grab a bottle and, and drink something. Um, yeah, it's nice to see how the bunch kind of stays, stays together and uh, rightfully so, Sina and Laura are saying like, hey, we're, we're, we're in the leader's jersey. If you want to go ahead, you have to work for it. We, we, we don't, we're not in a, in a rush at all. Uh, if you want to take initiative here, please. Yep, they just need to defend. Uh, mm. uh, mark, mark any, yep, mark any, any moves as Candace Lil uh, goes to the front now. And, uh, all the riders are taking yep. a bit of a drink. It's not that easy to, to take a drink while navigating those single track sections, especially with all the obstacles, all the rocks, all those small things in the way. They will mm. rather play it safe and uh, take a drink, uh, take on a gel or even some food. Here we go. Here they come through the water point. Crucial point bottles. here. Yeah, you want to be efficient here. You want to go... Uh, as a pro team, you have the, the luxury of, of getting your own nutrition. So the night before, your staff will hand in uh, bottles. So you get exactly your own bottles with what you prefer um, in them. And it's all about being efficient here. You don't want to hang around too long. And you can see here, positions change a little bit. Some teams more efficient going through here th than other. And it really does make a difference. You can just see their uh, computer mania team, that's Morath and Redeker. They've pulled in about uh, 30 seconds or so after the front group, uh, which contains Faces, CST, Salas Med, and 91 Songo Specialized. They made a quick stop, got some refreshments, and they will look to try and get back onto that group of uh, Faces, CST, 91 Songo Specialized, and Team Salas Med. They're going really well, that computer mania uh, team. They're nicely positioned. It's, uh, they're working well together, it seems. Yeah, it seems like they needed the first two stages to really um, work on their, their teamwork and get to know each other. Like, where where are the, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of your partner? How should we approach this and right to, to be as efficient as we can together? And right now, going out of the, the feed zone, they will have visual contact with the three leading teams. And if they just push a little bit harder to, to get back out on the, that group, it makes all the difference for them today. They are, uh, the women's race is currently just under halfway through at the 45 kilometer mark, and they're just about to navigate the Witzenberg Valley. Heading into uh, the trails that these uh, men have been uh, riding for a while, and you just get the feeling that someone is starting to uh, open the taps on the front of this group. A little bit of some gaps uh, appearing at the back there. As riders just trying to make sure they don't lose contact with this lead group. And it is Stosek and Sirvold, uh, Cameron Northwave, have gone to the front. Jordan Saru is there. Simon Schnell and Ushuba, the Paga Eurosteel men are there. As we get the gaps, all the group pretty much together. Six teams down to Buff Scott MTB all together. 
We've just got a roll call from that front group that we see there at the 60 kilometer mark. All teams are present and correct. There are 10 teams, in fact, that are in that front group, all in touch, all have a chance at line honors at uh, the finish today in Sarensburg. We've got both Bulls teams, Canyon Northwave, both Pago Eurosteel teams, 91 Songo Specialized, the race leaders are in there. Buff Scott Mountain Biking, Trek Pirelli, and the second Buff Scott Mountain Biking team are off the back. But we are looking also at Pure Encapsulations team, Dev Nano Time, and of course, the second Bulls team are in there as well. So all present and correct. We hope to see an exciting finish. They do have to navigate the wagon trail, the huge descent, probably the biggest descent in the entire race, and some of it on single track. And no doubt the teams will be wanting to get, will be jostling for position at the 77 kilometer mark to get into that whole shot to be at the front for the run-in to the finish in Sarensburg. Definitely. I remember doing the wagon trail and it, it feels really never ending. Um, it has a huge toll on your arms, your hands, and it's so rough. You know, at the end of the trail, it's like you, all, you almost have numb hands just yeah. because it's, it's so rough and so long. You don't really get any time to, to recover during that descent. Well, I can't wait to look to see that because it is going to uh, be a spectacular sight as they come off the uh, side of the Witzenberg Mountains and drop down towards uh, Tilbach and Saronsburg, which is uh, right there. Uh, so we break away, having just briefly lost signal. Remember that uh, we are taking you into some very remote parts of the Western Cape and uh, relying on uh, a signal uh, all the way, telecommunication signals all the way around uh, the region. And that very occasionally, very occasionally, you'll forgive us for losing a signal on those occasions now. Oh yeah, here we go. See, this is what this the today's stage is uh, is all about, and this is why it's really called the Queen Stage. You can see here it's a, a small or like a, a little bit of a climb, but the thing is, it's not just a climb. You have to navigate all these rocks, and some of them really kicks you all over the place, and it's hard to stay in one line. And if you lose traction here and have to get off your bike, you can end up really having to run for a long time before you find a smooth pad, pass, uh, part where you can get back onto your bike. So really not an easy trail at all today. Tire choice critical on a day like today. Yes. Fact, all the way through the Epsica Epic, but mm. uh, particularly in this sort of terrain. Yeah, um, in our team, um, or at the team uh, 91 Sunco Specialized, we, we have the luxury of having tires with uh, different casings. And I had a brief chat with Laura and Sina before the race, and really we were talking about tires because it's, it really is worthwhile to opt for the heavier um, um, versions of the tire to get that extra protection. It really does pay off. Um, so it's super important, really, really important. And also to consider with the weight of the tire, it's not just about uh, the, the actual weight because rotational mass, when when riding a, s a heavier tire does feel heavier, but also the rolling resistance of uh, a slightly different casing does make a difference. So the heavier tires don't necessarily roll as smoothly as the others, but will certainly be a very good insurance policy because a few seconds lost with a heavier tire is nothing compared to second or minutes lost with a puncture. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, there, you just noticed in that group there, there, were, there was a one men's team in, in amongst that uh, group of uh, three women's teams and they, not long uh, were they uh, in there. They soon r slipped out the back of that group to allow the women to go ahead. The uh, skill of those women, quite phenomenal, and uh, I think the right thing done there by those men. They didn't want uh, Laura holding up Laura Stig and, and uh, Sina Fry. No, absolutely not. Especially here in the first uh, part of uh, the entire race, in the first days here, some of the, the men's teams, they have to realize where, how strong they are in comparison to the women's teams. A lot of them think like, oh yeah, we can easily, we can easily ride here at the front because we're not in the way, but actually they are. Uh, especially here at the, the, end, at the start of the race, uh, they have to learn that fact. And you can see with time, the next couple of days, they will be more quick to move over because they know by now, okay, you are, you are faster, please go. We're not going to be in your way. And as you say, uh, you, you related the story with the, the Hanukkah brothers. You, you get familiar with those riders riding the same pace as you and, and they understand you and, and, and your goals and their goals. So it's a, 
it's a uh, it's it's a relationship that builds up at a, uh, throughout the week. And, mm. uh, yeah, it's all about respect. Important. You really yeah. and also because you share everything together without really talking, but you know exactly what each other experienced during a day. And it's nice after the finish line if you catch up and to have a little chat and just do a little bit uh, of debriefing as well with the uh, with other riders uh, from other categories. Yes, in the race we see a huge amount of camaraderie among the riders and. Uh, Riders of similar ability t tend to make great friends and forge, forge friendships. Certainly you forge a good bond with your partner, but also with the other riders around you at, at, uh, during the race and uh, over the eight days of, um, of the Absa Cape Epic. Just a recap on the uh, men's race situation. We saw the top 10 teams go through. We did see uh, Tiger Eurosteel drift off the back, perhaps as a mechanical issue. They are in the more open roads. But maybe there's a chance that the ravages of the Witzenberg Valley section, the really rocky section, perhaps uh, caused some mechanical issues for Pygo Eurosteel, um, for Kurt Haynes and uh, Matthias Bjorkus. We do have nine teams at the front. Um, currently, those split times were taken at the 60 kilometer mark. They hit the open roads afterwards. And we've got both Bulls teams ominously there in touch with the leaders and Trek Pirelli, another team we've been watching all week. And the race leaders, 91 Songo Specialized, very much in control of the race so far. Riding slightly defensively, we would expect them to attack at some point again during the race. Today might not be their day to do it. They had a great day yesterday. Um, job done. Let's see how they fare today on the single track descent down towards Sarensburg. And I think what, what we can see just from, from that, uh, in the results or the situation in the men's race after 60 odd Ks is that uh, they're showing the stage great respect because uh, there's a, the group is still fairly tight there. No one is, is going to be uh, bold and brave and uh, perhaps ultimately maybe foolish, who knows, but uh, to go too hard too early and attack because this is a, a stage to be respected. So. Uh, uh, that's what's happening out there. Top three women's teams all together there with uh, Computer Mania not far behind. Well, the uh, Absa Cape Epic is the pinnacle of the epic series uh, of events that are growing uh, around the world. It's a series that seeks out the most exhilarating, rewarding and, and beautiful mountain bike stage races around uh, the world, finding the essence of mountain biking uh, all around the world. And one of those events takes place uh, in... Uh, Croatia. It's a four islands mountain bike in Croatia and it takes place in April next year.
Mouth ordering stuff indeed, the Epic Series. And uh, that is Alba Lakata for the Epic Legends riding for Team Bulls. Now, uh, I can tell you right now that Alba Lakata is not going to be racing in the uh, Masters any longer because his partner Carl Platt has withdrawn from the race. We have news from the course that that uh, news has just come to us. So quite a lot of drama around that because Carl Platt and Albert Lucata, of course, Platt a five-time uh, winner of this event, and uh, he's out of the race. Uh, we'll bring you more details as to exactly why. I don't think he crashed, but. Uh, that's disappointing news for Carl Platt and Alvin Lucato of Team Bulls, the Epic Legends and the Masters leaders. Meanwhile, we are just reflecting back on some of the riding earlier today. This is the lead group of elite men, a big group here of 10 teams all together early on in this uh, Queen stage, because this is a stage that will push every single rider to their absolute limit today. And uh, it is taking the riders from the series up uh, over the Gedo Pass into the Witzenberg Valley, the harsh but uh, stunningly beautiful trails of the Witzenberg Valley, and then back over and out of the uh, Witzenberg Valley down the iconic old Wagon Pass, which will test riders' uh, stamina and mental fortitude as they come down it. And this is why, because the terrain is not dissimilar to this all the way around the course today. Very rocky, very tough, uncompromising, and uh, a lot of short, sharp climbs. No really big uh, serious climbs today, but a lot of uh, climbing over 2,100 meters accumulated over all these short, sharp climbs. And those sort of climbs, uh, depending on how you approach them, will uh, take a heavy toll on tired legs uh, through the day. Team Bulls have two teams in this lead group, also in there, of course, Canyon North Wave who are very much in contention for the overall here. Just a minute and 27 down on the overall leaders, 91 Songo Specialized, who have uh, Matt Beers, who knows these trails uh, very well, perhaps better than most in this group. And uh, he will be guiding and helping his partner, Jordan Saru, through these uh, trails. Also in this group, Paiga Eurostil in the Apps African uh, jersey category. They're the leaders in the red jerseys. And they, uh, Philip Bass and Peter Detroit will be looking to try and make their mark on this stage as they tried yesterday. It didn't quite work out for them, but they're keeping themselves at the sharp end. Also in here, the Buffs got pair, two of their teams as well as team encapsulations uh, as well. So all of the, the contenders in this group, but a slight increase in pace there, saw uh, uh, stretching out of the back of the group, but they all uh, soon regrouped to uh, tackle the second half of the day. They're well over halfway through the stage. And uh, this is a recap of the day's proceedings thus far. We have slight communication problems at the moment. So an opportunity for these riders to refuel as well. And our women's uh, category, well, Ariane Luti and Robin de Groot in second place. The marathon specialists behind the overall leaders, Laura Stigger and Sina Fry of 91 Songo Specialized. The team Salusmed will be biding their time and riding. And we talked about it the early part of the day, so did Darian and uh, Robin being conservative and managing uh, today all the tricky descents and making sure they get around safely. Ariane heading down ahead there of Laura Stigger and Sina Fry, Robin de Groot as well in this uh, group, as were the Apps African Jersey leaders, Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss of Team Faces CST in the third overall after a really tough day yesterday in which Candice, at least uh, Mariska had a couple of falls. As, uh, now, they're all yeah, in the same group, group which is the important thing. Uh, on the they're front, all together, the three, uh, and then in the middle of that, can, uh, uh, Computer uh, Mania uh, MTB uh, were not far off, about 25, 26 time. seconds off this group at around uh, 50 kilometers. Beautiful images, uh, courtesy of our drone as they flow down through these wonderful trails in the Witzenberg Valley, constructed uh, by Hannes Hanekom and his team at Elfmin uh, Farm is a farm they're riding through most of today's uh, stage. Onto the town, a chance to regroup and just uh, refuel as well. Every opportunity must be used on a day that is so packed with single track, not too many opportunities there. Still. So okay. uh, just no real uh, power on here, just uh, ticking it over for the time being. They know how tough this stage is. Well, they were just taking a drink here after the uh, after this single track section where they would have been 
uh, very little opportunity. You can see here, very little opportunity to grab a bottle. Take the hand, taking the hands off the handlebars does pose a risk, even if it is just to get some nutrition in. Better just to get through the tough sections and then wait a bit and then take a drink afterwards. Really difficult, rocky terrain, especially on the climbs. So Ronsberg peak over the uh, top of uh, Tilbach and uh, it's going to be a, a very, very tough uh, day for these riders as they come over the top and down into the uh, finish here. So as I said, we are having some difficulties in uh, connecting with our crew and cameras out in the remote Witzenberg Valley for the time being. So uh, as soon as we get live images, we'll bring those to you. But uh, right now, let's reflect on stage one of the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, it was an out and back loop from the beautiful town of Ceres into the trails of Eersofontein. The Absa Cape Epic is a magical African mountain bike race that sees 300 teams of two tackle 620 kilometers and a climb of almost 16,000 meters over eight grueling days. The challenging Western Cape terrain takes them from Cape Town to the grand finale at Val de Ville. Today's stage one starts and finishes in the fruit farming district of Ceres. Stage one is notoriously tough and the distance has rarely dropped below the 100 kilometer mark, but for the 2021 edition it sits at 98 kilometers with 1850 meters of climbing. The crux of the ride is known as the dead man walking climb, followed by the treacherous pipeline descent. On the start line in third after the prologue are Canyon Northwave, second are BMC KTM and current leaders in the men's elite category, 91 Songo Specialized with Jordan Saru and Matthew Beers in the yellow zebra jersey. As the gun goes for the first stage of the 17th Absa Cape Epic, the leaders are with their closest rivals, BMC KTM and Canyon Northwave MTB. Both Bulls teams are also at the front, currently in fifth and sixth. They leave series heading off into the rocky wilderness of the Western Cape. In the women's category, Team Salusmed are in third. Second place are Faces CST in the dark red African leaders' jerseys. And Cape Epic newbies, Sina Fry and Laura Stiger of 91 Songo Specialized, are in the orange zebra leaders' jerseys. The start gun goes, and the women's pro category embark on the first marathon stage of the 2021 APSA Cape Epic. Bad luck at the beginning of the race for yesterday's second place team, BMC KTM. They have a mechanical problem with their derailleur and lose three to four minutes, then a puncture to follow. They're out of the running for a podium today. In the early part of the men's race, the lead group stays together with several teams in the mix. However, as soon as they approach the toughest climb of the day, dead man walking, it's Team 91 Songo specialized in the yellow jerseys who take the lead and set the pace. They win the Dimension Data hotspot at the top of the climb, followed by Bulls 1, Canyon Northwave and Bulls 2. The chasing group are joined by South Africa's Piger Eurosteel 2, taking the group to a total of four teams. They need to work together if they're going to catch the breakaway pair of Saru and Beers. The leaders are now descending the pipeline single track on the Esofentane farm. These are some of the oldest mountain bike trails in the country. the 70 kilometer mark they finally catch the leaders in yellow and all work together to make time on the chasing group. As the leaders approach the finish line in series, a sprint finish is inevitable. For the final 10 kilometers the pace is blistering. Usuba from Bulls 1 is the most experienced in this situation. It comes down to the final 3 kilometers where they jostle for position. As they round the final corner, the experience of Uber pays off as he and Schneller cross the line first. Closely followed by Simon Stibjan and his partner Martin Fry for Bulls 2. Within the next three seconds, Canyon Northwave and the yellow jerseys also cross the line. It's an incredibly tight race. It's Huber's sixth victory at the Absa Cape Epic and the first for teammate Simon Schneller. The men's podium sees Canyon Northwave in third, taking them up to second in the GC. Second goes to Bulls 2, taking them to third overall. And first goes to Bulls 1, bumping them up to fourth, going into stage two. 91 Songo Specialized managed to hold on to the yellow leaders' jerseys and have almost two minutes on second place. The women's field stay together for the first 40 kilometers of the race 
and it's Sina Fry and Laura Stigger making the first move on their way to the Dead Man Walking Ascent. 46 kilometers in at the top of the climb is the Dimension Data hotspot. 91 Songo Specialized has a lead of 54 seconds on Team Salus Med of Robin de Kruert and Ariane Luti, and Team Pacers CST in third, 1 minute and 55 seconds behind. Fry and Stigger keep pushing on the technical descent and the following flat section. Swiss Austrian pair keep extending their lead all the way to the finish line and win the stage for the time of just under 4 hours and 35 minutes. Ariane Luti and Robin de Kruert from Team Salus made cross the line in second, 4 minutes and 51 seconds behind on today's tough stage. The South African duo of Mariska Strauss and Candice Lill have a nightmare day on the Western Cape Trails. Strauss crashes twice, but they manage to limit the damage, crossing the finish line in third, just over 12 minutes behind the winners. The women's podium sees faces CST in third, Salus made in second, and 91 Songo specialized in first. Fry and Stigger extend their lead in the GC to just... On uh, the epic series and uh, what a way to uh, explore some of the most beautiful parts of the world on your mountain bike part of the epic series now this is a look at the situation after 69 what 69 kilometers on stage two of the Absa Cape epic we must apologize we unfortunately have lost our signal to the uh, uh, cameras out on the route but uh, we'll bring uh, you live pictures as soon as we possibly can but Canyon Northwave uh, Bulls, Pyaga Eurosteel, 91 Songo Specialized, Trek Pirelli, Buff Scott MTB, Ta Type Dev Nano Time, Bulls 2, Pure Encapsulations were in the group dropping off that group Pyga Eurosteel 2, that's Phil at these Mateus Birkus and Gertais, beg your pardon, Pyga Eurosteel. Pyga Eurosteel 2 are in that group, that's Base and Dutoy. So nine teams pretty much together in that lead group as we head towards uh, the critical phase of this stage, the climb out of the Witzenberg Valley and then the descent down the uh, wagon trail in towards Tilbach and then ultimately Saronsburg, which is the finish of today's second stage of the Absa Cape Epic here in the, the beautiful Western Cape. On a stunningly beautiful day, it really is uh, absolutely beautiful today and perfect riding conditions for the riders. Not too hot, although riding in the middle of the Witzenberg Valley in a couple of hours time, I think riders will disagree with us, but uh, it's, it can be a lot worse, that's for sure. Um, as many who've ridden through those areas in March and the Absa Cape Epic will testify to. So conditions absolutely perfect and a race to save. I think we're going to see a fantastic finish again today heading into Saronsburg. A sprint finish yesterday with Team Bulls winning that into Ursuba and uh, Simon Schnell as you saw just now on our news uh, lineup and Canyon Northwave will be looking perhaps to uh, put a marker down today. The Marathon World Champion Andres Hewald and Martin Stosek involved in that harsh rugged mountain terrain it is here in the western cape you saw from the Swiss epic and uh, various other events around the world in the uh, epic series that uh, there's similar terrains all around but this uh, is the one they all aspire to ride 
Faces CST as well as 91 Songo Specialized and Team Salus made all together in the women's race after 45 and a half kilometers. Computer Mania MTB just swinging off the back of that group at the moment. The pair of Cherie Redeker and uh, her partner Adelaide Morath in Fairtree. Amy McDougall and uh, Jenny Stenach. The Land Rover ladies uh, are in the mix there as well. Preen and Rabi Lapier, Liv Lapier racing. Some five, nearly six minutes off the group. And then Galileo Infinity Spot. That's uh, Kim Lacourt and Teresa Ralph. Mitre Cycles Darnival, a little bit further back. And uh, Honey Custom Apparel closing up the top 10 of the women's uh, race at this stage. It's a harsh, tough day today. No question about that for every single one of these riders. Well, it's a great privilege to have uh, an epic legend sitting alongside us, a five-time uh, champion, a world champion uh, in uh, two disciplines. Uh, Anneke Langfeld with us sitting enjoying the, the terrain. I know you've spoken about the itchy feet of, of getting out there, but when we hear news that uh, a man like Carl Platt, who was looking to complete his 15th APSA Cape Epic, has withdrawn from the race due to his stomach problems. He had apparently the news is a uh, upset stomach overnight and he's just gone completely uh, flat today that uh, tells you how tough it is and how uh, difficult it is to be prepared for this event and the importance of, uh, of, of preparing for this event for things like that exactly and that's where the experience of having done the race a few times before really comes into play um, I can speak for myself uh, the first uh, couple of times that I did a stage race in South Africa I myself was a victim of some, some stomach problems and then I learned the importance of, of really um, preparing for that as well. So I would really load on probiotics, uh, the good bacteria for your stomach beforehand and during the entire week and uh, that had, has helped me a lot uh, in the, the past races and also some, some important information that I could pass on to to uh, Laura Sticker and Sina Fry, I was kind of mentoring them um, a bit going into to this uh, to this race. Um, coming out of Europe, um, you must respect that this. Uh, it's not only the terrain that is different; it's also the, the environment for your stomach is, is different, and it, it's it's important to prepare for that uh, too. It really makes a big difference. And you're putting your body under extreme stress every day, so uh, yes. that that that's going to be a, a, a problem as well. Yeah, I mean, this is no walk in the park at all, and really, your body is under such pressure, pressure and your immune system as well. Your immune system is using everything it can. Uh, to to recover, uh, meaning it takes it takes less for your stomach to yeah to get into trouble. Mm. It's not to say that uh, the uh, food and uh, that the, uh, the catering around the the Absa Cape Epic uh, is in any way going to uh, treat you badly, but it's the nature of a, of an event like this. Uh, that your body's under stress, your immune system is going to take a toll, and if you you do come from uh, other environments overseas, you are going to be eating different foods, and, and sometimes they don't agree with you. Certainly not an appetizing subject to talk about, but uh, if you think about that one, they might not necessarily be able to distance all of their rivals, but they've certainly put time into the bulls, and uh, hopefully put the. Uh, 91 Songo Specialized Riders under pressure. We heard earlier that Matt Beers was struggling a little bit. There was a tiny gap there developing, but it looks like he's back in control of the pace. And all he has to do is just stay in touch because there is a downhill coming. He is more experienced on the downhill sections because he knows this terrain very well. He will be, uh, he'll be taking great care. Perhaps he'll try and get the whole shot. He'll try and get into the front. You see the valley down below. And there's the race village. Uh, just beyond the uh, little town of uh, Tilbach. Uh, the one that, that Matt Beers in that group is the only one who's ridden down this uh, trail before. Um, so uh, he will uh, no doubt give uh, Jordan Saru, he'll want to get, uh, try and get there and uh, uh, get down there ahead of them. You can see there, they're, they're pretty much out of sight. It looks like yeah. Stefan Sam did say the gap was 15 or so seconds. And um, out of sight is, uh, makes it a little bit harder for the uh, chasing team. It's often easier to have the, the hare up the road to chase. And uh, when they don't have the a visual up front, it makes it all much harder. Well, the, the helicopter is the, the, the sign of where the leaders are. And uh, you could just catch a glimpse of it on the left of the screen there. 
high up on the ridge of the Witzenberg Mountains on the uh, western slopes of the Wist Witzenberg Valley. They've traversed a big loop around the, the base of the, uh, the valley floor and now are climbing out and putting uh, the finishing touches to this day. You, you want to say that the last uh, 15 Ks are going to be very fast, but uh, they're not going to be as fast as you would think if you looked at the profile because it's just straight down, but uh, that is a very, very technical descent. So it'll be taken with a degree of caution as Jordan Saru goes to the front of this group here with Stosek on his wheel. Servalt and Beers just closing the gap up towards them. Thomas Ditch is the man sitting with the e-bike alongside them. And uh, again, just the concertinas as they hit the climb. Jordan Saru very keen to, uh, to keep the pace high. The yellow jerseys in the lead, they don't necessarily have to attack. But they know that any time they can put into their rivals, like the Bulls, uh, like Trek Pirelli, and uh, of course the team here, we see this, this is uh, Buff Scott mountain biking. They are contenders for the overall GC. So any time that 91 Songo Specialized can put into these guys, the better. They'll take the opportunity when they can. Jordan Saru not, certainly not skiving off his workload. He is putting in maximum effort. Matt Beers has said during this race that Jordan is absolutely on fire. His form is superb and making it really count. And capitalizing on that move, Canyon Northwave are in front, in touch with the leaders' yellow jerseys. They are also be, they'll be very happy to put some time into both Bulls teams. We did see back in the chase group that one of the Bulls teams had dropped off. This the Bulls team's the Bulls team in contention is Urs Huber and Simon Schneller, and they are pretty much the favorite team of the Bulls to lead this race. Just about to go down into the valley on the major descent of the race. Yeah, they are. Look at Matt Beers just moving ahead of Andreas Sivold. They're trying to get in position here to uh, get to the front of the race. Uh, Jordan Saru and then uh, Martin Storsek. Beers just uh, popping in front of uh, Suvolt there. It is spectacular, isn't it? They're over the ridge. Uh, Tilbach on the right-hand side, Ceres on the left, and uh, the drop into the valley is about to begin. It really is uh, spectacular. Now, Martin Stozek will do well to keep uh, Matt Beers at bay. Yeah. If he goes into that hole shot, into that descent, there'll be very little opportunity to overtake on that wagon trail descent. Martin Stozek will try and keep that position number two in the trail so as not to let a gap open up with 91 Songo Specialized. Well, there's the gap as they went through that uh, time split uh, at 77 kilometers. 34 seconds, Trek Pirelli, the Bulls uh, one team and Buff Scott MTB. So uh, the gap has opened up a bit between the first two teams and the next three. And we can see now Matt actually was able to overtake and be in second position. So now the 91 Nesango Specialized team is in a really good position, being one or two at the front and are able to, to set the pace down this descent. And It'll be interesting to see how, how willing each team is to take risks and chances to be fast down in this descent. We know it is going to be super rocky and has a super high risk of, of getting a flat tire. Here it's they go into the descent. It was a telling moment in the race when Matt Beers overtook Martin Stozek. The two 91 Songo Specialized riders now in front and very much in control. Yes, it's on this ridge line. This is the lowest part. It's a little saddle, and uh, you'll see the electric power lines. They've used that to go up uh, there because it is the, 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 the lowest. But there's the chase group coming around. Uh, yeah, 30, yeah, half a minute it is as they begin this uh, winding single track descent. Saru is still on the front. I think every year we're always amazed at the spectacular terrain of the Western Cape as they head down this valley. This is the old wagon trail at the uh, Apsa Cape Epic as they head away from the Witzenberg Valley on stage two and down to the finish at Saronsburg. The lead group is uh, two teams. 91 Songo specialized in the yellow jersey, the leaders, and Canyon Northwave MTB. The chase is second on GC by a minute and 47. This is the chase group. Team Bulls are in here. Urs Huber and Simon Schneller. Team Buff Scott. That's Jose Diaz in picture now. And his partner, Hans Becking. And Pirelli, MTB, uh, Trek Pirelli, uh, Samueli Poro and Fabian Ravensteiner. 
And uh, if uh, those, uh, there were some who were questioning why this was the Queen's stage, these riders will be able to tell you exactly why once they get to the finish, because it has been brutally hard. And this finish, uh, descent it might be, is a very, very tricky, treacherous uh, descent to be taken with a degree of caution. And one thing to consider on this descent is, of course, the fatigue, not just uh, on the, certainly on the arms and the whole body, in fact. And it, because it's a long descent, the riders will need to perhaps not go full out, not take too many risks, because the fatigue can play a big role. Oh, yeah, certainly. Watching these images right now, I, <laughs> I recall every, <laughs> every minute of this descent. It, is, it feels never-ending. You think, oh, I'm ju we're just about to be there, but you're not. It continues, it goes on and goes on and goes on. So just to, just to give you perspective, this is with our drone on the other side of the valley. These riders are heading over to the forest. You can see that green forest on that far side. To the left of that is where the descent, uh, the, the elite riders are heading uh, down now. So that's, that's how much ground they still have to cover. Um, so it is, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we focus on these men and the women at the sharp end, and rightfully so, they are the uh, sharp end of the sport. But uh, the... The riders further down the field are having a, a really, really tough day. We're just capturing images now from the chase group. This is the second group on the road, and we can see right in front of us is Jose Diaz and uh, from the Buff Scott mountain bike team, and he is in a small group with the Bulls and Trek Pirelli chasing after the leaders of the on the day, the Canyon North Wave, and, of course, the yellow jerseys, 91 Songo Specialized. On board here with Stefan Sam in this uh, chase group, Rocks and uh, Diaz there just doing everything to make sure he doesn't lose contact here with uh, his partner and with the rest of the group. We do have a time check from that peak. We're going back a little bit in the race, but with time check, that's a 77 kilometer mark. They are way beyond that now. But at that 77 kilometer mark, which was the top of that descent, and we had the two teams, 91 Songo Specialized and Canyon North Wave ahead, and the Bulls, Trek Pirelli, were 30 seconds back. So it's the chasing group, Bulls, Trek Pirelli, and Buff Scott Mountain Biking. And two minutes 13 back is the second Bulls team of Martin Fry and Simon Stibjohn, and Philip Bass and Pago Eurosteel, pure encapsulations, all in touch. Well, Mark, at least uh, Matt Beers and uh, Jordan Saru, who's on the front of this, have just opened up a little bit of a, a gap back to uh, Stosek and Sirvolt, the Chasers Canyon North Wave. That's closed up now, just about. But, uh, they are flying down there. 91 Songo Specialized, the yellow jerseys, going about defending their jerseys in very, very impressive fashion here. And the thing is, uh, the race is not, uh, the, the finish line is not at the bottom of this descent. Once you get out of the descent, you still have to go some kilometers, like rel relatively flat, meaning if you can get down there alone with no other teams with you, and you have an engine like Matt Beers, this is a really good uh, position to be in and, and can really get you faster to the finish line and, and even, you know, increasing the gap to the team behind you. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Team 91 Sango Specialized will get down here uh, with a good gap and can maintain or even build on that gap on the, flat, on the flats uh, towards the finish line. Yes, there's around about an eight when they reach the bottom, and that's the time check. They'll reach the bottom at about the, uh, at about the 88 kilometer mark, and they finishes at 96, so it's eight kilometers of more or less flat sections. And we will be looking very carefully to see Canyon North Wave, if they can stay in touch with the yellow jerseys really good idea for a Martin Stozek to close that gap. The risks are less when they are in touch. They can see the lines that Matt Beers is taking. Matt Beers is a highly experienced rider and very experienced, good know-how of these trails. They will do very well to get on the back of Matt Beers. But there is a gap opening. They're not taking quite as many risks or they don't have quite as much of the knowledge of the trail. They are losing touch with the yellow jerseys. It's that risk and reward thing, isn't it? And uh, the conservative approach as opposed to uh, do we go hard and look for the, the, the extra seconds we can gain here. To, uh, measuring that, that, that is such a, a tricky on the bike thing here. Yeah, and uh, right now I believe the Kenyan, Kenyan North Wave uh, team is put on a huge of pressure. If they could, they would have preferred to be right on the wheel of Matt Beers. So I, I assume they, they are kind of taking risks now uh, to, to stay with the leading uh, team. Saru's so led all the way down this descent. 
and looked very comfortable in it as well as he should. He's uh, clearly a very skilled and a, and a proven winner. He's a world champion, of course. And this is the chase group, the back of the chase group. Diaz with Becking ahead of him. And then uh, Poro and Ravensteiner. And then the Bulls pair of Ursuba and Simon Schneller. Yeah, I mean, it just so, so um, risky in a way. I mean, one little rock catches your uh, pedal or derailleur and uh, it can all end in tears. I think even riding these trails fresh and uh, having not done several kilometers beforehand, it would be a tricky section to navigate. But with fatigue, with, uh, with the speed of the racing, and of course with the pressure of the yellow jerseys disappearing up the road and uh, the potential of losing even more time um, compounds the factors at, at play in the racing and uh, could force an error. And that's what uh, Trek Pirelli, the Bulls, and of course the Afscott mountain biking team who are chasing, they need to be very careful not to push too hard, not to take too many risks. Here we have the leading women's teams seem to be more or less intact. We've got Salas Med. We, have, we can see Ariane Luti and Robin Ducourt. Robin Ducourt taking the initiative at the front, keeping control of the pace. And we have got team CS, uh, faces CST in there and computer mania all in touch. The top four women's teams are in the group together. And it really seems like uh, Sina getting that uh, message uh, right on the start line yes. that uh, this was uh, the queen stage had have made them right a little bit more conservative than we saw them do yesterday. Uh, dynamics of this race has really changed in comparison to yesterday. Uh, it's going to be super interesting to see how all this unfolds. Are they going to try to push the pace uh, leading up to the, the last peak of the day before the long summit? Uh, definitely that would be a good strategy to try to get first into that long descent. Back with the uh, leading men on the descent of the uh, wagon trail. And uh, that is the chase group. But that's uh, Stosek and Sirvold. You look as though they may have lost a few more seconds to uh, Beers and Saru. Who are looking up the trail. Just catch a glimpse of movement up there. So there is a significant gap now that uh, 91 Songo Specialized have opened up here. That is really, that is significant for sure. Definitely. It's a, it's a decisive uh, moment right now. Um, and just being uh, Canyon North Wave and seeing the leaders just drift away slowly is uh, really hard mentally. And as soon as they start to be in a position where they see them less and less, sometimes it, it's makes you slow down because you, you don't have that really clear target ahead of you anymore and you have to find your own speed. Uh, so it's a, it's a good move here by 91 Sunco Specialized, definitely. Huge impressive and you can see Jordan Saru just loving the opportunity to get a bit of air oh, yeah, in the whip yeah, there as well. It. Lovely. <laughs> He's a uh, consummate uh, professional and a highly skilled as is Matthew Beers, the background as a uh, motocross racer, spent uh, his early young years racing in the United States, picked up an injury and in his rehab was doing uh, recovering and uh, doing some uh, cycling and tests uh, on the bike in the lab and uh, one of the uh, scientists realized or the doctor said, hang on, you've got a pretty decent engine here. And uh, lo and behold, that's proven to be pretty prophetic he certainly has and he's made a career out of uh, that engine here and a wonderful mindset as well certainly some skills to match and of course the section that we saw last the fast section this is a section that uh, it, it can roll really fast the trails are quite wide open but there are some super treacherous obstacles in the way and uh, it really is a case of who dares wins and clearly the canyon north wave team are taking it a lot more conservatively and we're behind right we're behind uh, behind Buttscott mountain biking. This is Jose Diaz right in front of us currently. Trek Pirelli in that same group and the Bulls. Tate has done well to hike up there. They're not going to be able to go back down the trail for a long while. <laughs> it's going to be riders on this trail uh, coming down here for a long period. A great image on board with Stefan Sam. It was five years ago that we first started to use the e-bikes and the live footage from the e-bikes. And uh, we're getting a great milestone. Amazing to be able to have a conversation with uh, Stefan Sam on the trails. 
a remarkable milestone for the race to get coverage and such, such vis visceral coverage. And, uh, got some visuals from the helicopter of Matt Beers following Jordan Saru on the downhills. Absolutely. And also those images right up close as they are getting towards the bottom and then the farm down the bottom of the trail here as it will start flattening out and then the uh, charge will be on for the finish at Saronsburg, which is uh, on the other side, not quite totally on the other side of the valley, but uh, they would have to uh, go through or past uh, the town of Tilbach and to the finish uh, just on the western side of the town. Incredible images, as you're saying, Neil, of these uh, riders flying down here at high speed. And we really get a sense of the trail and a sense of the obstacles, the potential disasters, the rocks jutting out and the bushes that could possibly catch handlebars. The trail is cleaned up for the race, but still it is very rough going on this descent. The wagon trail down to the valley and down to the checkpoint number seven. We'll be keeping a very close eye to see what the time differences are between the yellow jerseys who are in the lead at the moment and what the gap is back to their challenges, Team Canyon Northwave. Really rocky and loose and dusty, but he's through there, no problem. And uh, now they head out onto the uh, farm road. So the descent to negotiate it safely by our leading teams. And uh, now it's pin the ears back and uh, hit for home. You can see the, the town of Stilbach top left of your uh, screen just out of sight now and uh, they'll be uh, going out towards that and then just the other side of that is Saronsburg. And the leading team here has really opened up a, a significant uh, gap um, and from here on you can see it's really fast uh, flat rolling so having someone like Matt Beers in the team and if he's still feeling comfortably good it's a huge advantage he can really really uh, be, be a good uh, train to get back home. Significant. There is the gap. 22 seconds. 91 Songo Specialized have on Canyon Northwave, considering they went into that descent all together. So Saru leading the way down that trail has uh, set a perfect tempo to give this pair a little bit of an advantage going into the flat roll into the finish at Saronsburg with Matt Beers on the front now and this is what he does so well he has got an incredible engine and already you can see him now uh, oh isn't he loving it uh, jordan saru brilliant bulls trek brilliant buff scott now 52 53 and a minute back it'll be absolutely full taps open for 91 songer specialized matt beers is leading the way and he'll absolutely go as fast as he possibly can because he knows that gap even if it's 20 seconds on the road that extra 20 seconds can make a big difference and we'll try to distance canyon north wave if only to make them suffer to catch on you know that they didn't take the descent as fast as uh, as, as they did so they'll be looking to put them under pressure as much as possible make it up to them to chase and of course, the mindset right now for Canyon Northwave is not to, is first of all to try and catch up to the 91 Songo Specialized team, but also to try and hold off Trek Brilly, the Bulls, and Buff Scott mountain biking. There, you can just get a, an image of uh, on the road, at the gap uh, opening up between the uh, first and second teams. Yes, from here on, it's essentially a time trial to the finish line. Thomas Deitch sitting with. Uh, the Canyon Northway pair here, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on uh, how Andrea Sivalt and Martin Stosik try and pull this back. Oof, they're going. They oh, are. they're absolutely giving everything now. They are. Stosik on the front, Sivalt uh, behind him, the world champion. Ravensteiner and uh, Poro here. Uh, no, oh, a crash. Of a crash. Yeah, of a crash. Diaz has had a crash. Oh, 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 crash, crash, crash. Tom, uh, Stefan is with us. Uh, Stefan, what happened? Uh, like a blind corner blinds on right, and it was dust and stuff. So, uh, maybe something from you. And 
just couldn't recover. And then... then oh. Oh, here we go. Okay, so unfortunately we're not able to get a clear description there, unfortunately, due to the connection, but uh, we saw what happened there. We yeah. did see, and we can probably yeah. fill in the gaps yeah. as to what happened. So apparently th th there was a corner coming up uh, really fast, and the vision was not too good. And you can see here the Scott Buff rider just completely overshoot uh, that corner. And when he tried to make up for it by making a sharp turn, uh, the ground was so loose that it, it forced his bike to, to slide out. He's really digging deep here. I think uh, Hans Becking is uh, hammering it, uh, second rider in that group behind the Italian champion. So the Italian champion and the Dutch champion and their respective partners. Trying to close the gap to Canyon Northway, but it was uh, 50 odd seconds. They probably lost a few more there for that uh, to that crash. Certainly, and uh, they may have got up quite quickly, but of course there's that, that, that thing that you do when you have a crash. There's always the vital signs check. How's the bike? Um, how are the handlebars, are they straight? Are, it, are the tires still inflated? Are the wheels straight? And of course the physical check, have I broken anything? Um, and normally you'd feel that pretty quickly, but getting back onto the bike, one has to get back into that rhythm, get back into that mindset of pure racing, uh, ignore whatever pain is coming, and I'm sure Annika will, uh, will, will expand on that. Yeah, and you can see not only what you just said here now, but also the fact that he had to work so hard straight after to catch up uh, to his partner. Uh, it's, it's really tough and it really messes up your rhythm totally. Schneller and uh, Ushuba, stage winners yesterday. They're not going to win today's stage, but they're not holding anything back and trying to limit their losses to their rivals on uh, GC. They were fourth overall, two minutes and 17 behind 91 Songo Specialized. One thing we can expect is that they could well vault themselves into second place because Martin Fry and Seamus Stiebjohn have uh, lost contact with this group and they were in third place. And uh, they were just nine seconds ahead, eight seconds ahead of uh, their teammates. So that could change a Bulls team for a Bulls team on the podium uh, on the GC after today. And we saw Simon Stiebjohn struggling a little bit yesterday, always on the back, a uh, little bit of a gap developing. And we saw similar images today and clearly, as the pressure went down after they'd passed through the Witzenberg Valley up to the last peak of the day, Simon Stibjohn lost touch and, of course, Martin Fry dropped back to help his teammate. So we've dropped into the land of the Weber in the uh, Tulbach uh, Valley. And uh, this entire long valley is bisected by the Breda River which uh, rises uh, almost where we were yesterday, near Sofentain, with a ride, and then comes through the valley, cuts through the Mitchells Pass, and then drops down through uh, past Wolseley with uh, the uh, valley on the right-hand side of the Breda. Very dry and uh, a lot more uh, uh, harsh, I think, than on the, on the left-hand side, where the river flows down away from where the riders are now towards... Uh, Swelling Dam and eventually the Indian Ocean. Beautiful flowing trails for the riders at the moment. They've done a lot of work in Tilbach to uh, expand the network of uh, trails here over the last number of years. And uh, it's just oh. another example. Here we go. Stefan with Hans Becking just ahead here. So Diaz is back in the fold having had that fall. Whoopsie! So they're having a tough old finish, the Buff Scott pair. Becking just losing uh, his front wheel and uh, having to uh, lose a bit of time. Yes, Stefan? Stay out here. Everyone's fighting to get back. And uh, the. the Back is pretty fast and loose. Well, this is the leading team, Jordan Saru and Matt Beers, five kilometers out from the finish. Beautiful uh, riding as they head towards uh, Saronsburg on the outskirts of Tilbach. And you really see why this is called the Queen stage. Uh, the whole stage was super draining. 
not easy rolling terrain, then they had that long downhill, like really, really making your upper body and arms and everything tired. Then you think, okay, it's only flat to the finish line after the last descent, but it's not. It's it's still, it is kind of relatively flattish, but it's super loose, super sandy, and that's where you need to stay so focused. And you can see here, it's so easy to, to just make a tiny mistake, and then all of a sudden your bike is just kicked off, off um, the trail. That's the result of all manner of things, but uh, fatigue will play a role there. The, the focus does drift when you are on the limit. You have been on the limit for a good three and a three quarter hours. So uh, it is uh, going to happen. It's the real test. It's yeah. a mental test of uh, fighting and fighting and fighting for 90 kilometers, uh, not just with yourself, with your bike, with the terrain, but also with the other riders, putting pressure on uh, on the other teams just when it really counts. And uh, it can be super draining, and um, no doubt Annika will account for that it's uh, it, it ta takes its toll after 90 kilometers oh yeah it surely does it really really does it's it's hard to explain just how hard it is uh, but these ride riders are doing incredibly well uh, especially now with the uh, team 91 Sanko specialized being out at the front um, and they're looking they're still looking really really good it looks like they really managed their energy throughout the stage really well uh, really using this entire course to their favor and it, uh, you can see here Matt is going to the front and they're good at taking turns at the front. It looks like they have a really good feeling uh, by now when, who should be at the front to make them the fastest. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, it's a good pairing that we're seeing here. And certainly the morale will be boosted. They've been boosted, the, bo the morale has been boosted from the uh, previous uh, two days of fantastic racing. And of course, being in the yellow jersey and being out in the lead, having distanced their rivals and uh, distance the Canyon Northwave team on that descent. They'll be uh, buoyed with some extra enthusiasm and morale is everything in the Absa Cape Epic. Oh yeah, it is. It really makes all the difference. Uh, and they're in a good position now. They know they're in the lead. They just passed the 5K uh, to go sign. Uh, those signs, I mean, whenever you see them, it makes you, especially if you're in the lead right now, it makes you really, really motivated because you, you, can, you can kind of smell the finish line by now. Uh, and it makes the last stretch a little bit easier. And, uh, you know, unlike uh, a lot of uh, spectator sports, there are not too many opportunities to uh, feed off the crowd and get that sort of energy. But just, he just passed through a farm there and there were people gathering at the side of the trail. And, and uh, this team, they'll know that uh, there's a South African in this team and uh, they'll be, you know, celebrating that and Matt Beers will feed off that and so Jordan Saru will feed off that the energy they're getting close to the finish you've yeah. been in this situation uh, riding into the finish here the, the the excitement the adrenaline yes you can smell the finish it's it's just uh, difficult to describe unless you've been there so, as you've said exactly and this is really the moment where it all comes together mm. um, you put in all the hard work, you had some tactics, and all of a sudden you see, hey, it worked. We're doing really well. What we planned uh, is happening, and you know, that's that's the best feeling ever. Ravensteiner and uh, Poro there, the uh, Trek Pirelli pair, they were on their own. Alone because they yeah. were they, because of the crash from the second crash, in fact, Buff Scott mountain biking, this time it was uh, Hans Baking. The first crash we saw was Jose Diaz. Uh, Trek Pirelli will be on their own, and it looks like uh, the marathoners, the the marathon world champion Andreas Sievold and his partner Mark Stozak have 91 Songo specialized in their sights. There's still a, not an insurmountable gap that they have to, but they are going full gas. Just taking a drink, perhaps not 100% yes. uh, full, but they know they have to refuel. Just perhaps the ravages of the stage really taking their toll. If they're taking a drink at this stage, it means that they really are lacking in nutrition and in hydration. But uh, you can see. Definitely back down to full, back up to full power for the rider at the front. That is Martin Stozek. Nothing like catching a glimpse as they came around the corner of the leaders up there. And that is an inspiration to, to uh, keep pushing hard. But then moments later, Beers and Saru took the left and headed away. 28 seconds, the uh, gap at this stage. Now, what's probably going through their minds right now is the anxiety that any team would have having to chase, seeing more time going of their, their rivals going up the road. They will be, uh, their mindset won't be quite as uh, good as these guys up front. The 91 Songo Specialized team, they're buoyed with the enthusiasm of being in the yellow jerseys. They've managed to distance their rivals on the flat sections. 
uh, and in fact on the descent and they're holding that advantage Jordan Saru just taking some time to recover in Matt Beer's slipstream as Matt Beers opens up the taps once again trying to keep that gap open that 30 second gap and you can see they're doing so well here taking turns at the front um, just really really getting the most out of it so if you're in front you can do it right a little bit harder if you're uh, get, benefiting from your this in sitting in the slipstream of your partner you can just recover a little bit and then go to the front with yeah. uh, renewed energy well they keep looking back over their shoulders and unfortunately they might be looking first at our camera motorbike and then at uh, at uh, stefan but if they look further around they'll, they uh, may well catch a glimpse of uh, Storsek and Seervolt. and the helicopter following the leaders on the way and then that obviously means that Canyon um, Northwave team will know exactly where they are on the trail, where the leaders are on the trail to spot the helicopter. If they're not in sight up, up the road in front, they will be able to see where the helicopter is. But uh, focusing now on Matt Beers at the front, clearly at full power, Jordan Saru taking some refuge in that, that rather large slipstream behind the 6'5 Matt Beers. This is so great to watch, really giving it everything to the finish line. If they can gain on the, the GC today, that's a perfect position to be in uh, heading into tomorrow. Great shot by the helicopter. You can really see the expression of effort on the face of Matt Beers. You, know, you just get a glimpse at, at the slight, how, how technology and, and, and bike technology has advanced over the years on their, their switch. It's a slightly slacker head angle than uh, in, in the early days, and uh, as riders become more and more accustomed to riding, um, as, as the technology improves, so they become uh, uh, more and more accustomed to riding 120. I think they're both on 120 mil uh, travel, uh, I think, at the, at the front. We've seen mountain bikes evolve hugely over the history of the Apsic Air Epic. We remember in 2004 the winners raced on aluminium hardtails, <laughs> and uh, since then we've seen the advent of carbon fiber frames, uh, still with 26 inch wheels. And the riders went to around about the, the beginning of the, uh, the decade, 2010, 2011, riders began to use the larger wheel size, the larger format wheel size, the 29ers. And then from then going to the full suspension bikes, uh, really sharp, steep head angles, short travel. And uh, with the technical nature of the trails, the trails have got far more technical, both in the World Cup scene and, of course, in the marathon scene. The travel of the suspension has definitely extended as uh, they get closer and closer to home, they can probably by now hear the announcer, Matt Beers and Jordan Saru, look like victory is in sight for them. There's concern. You, you, every opportunity they, they feel they might have of catching a glimpse, they, they just keep making sure that that gap stays. Uh, well, as long as there's a gap, I suppose, as far as they're concerned, uh, that's all that matters. Well, they won't be getting time checks like on the road. We see the riders have their race radios and they'll be getting information from their team managers in the car pretty much up to the minute. They will not be getting that kind of information, but they can sense that they have a good gap. They look back, they can see the distance. And they'll know more or less how much time it is. But the main thing is that they know that they, they keep the pressure on. If they can keep their rivals at bay, they will be assured of another stage victory. They won the prologue. They were off the podium yesterday in the stage, but retained their overall lead. And today they look good for line honors. Saru so looks around. He looked down and then around. Two kilometers uh, by estimation uh, of our man in the helicopter. So uh, every effort being put in by these riders to make sure that they retain the advantage here and increase their lead ever so slightly, whatever it might be on the uh, general classification, the 91 Songo Specialized Pair. We saw the time gap back uh, a few kilometers back and it was at 28 seconds. And uh, if they've managed to maintain that gap, which it looks like they have, they've kept the pressure on. 91 Songo Specialized have maintained that gap 30 seconds right now. If Canyon Northway have any ambitions of stage victory, they are running out of road to catch up that 30 seconds. Two kilometers to catch up 30 seconds is a long, it's a, it's a very tall order for the Canyon Northwave team. Barring incident, 91 Songo Specialized are looking very likely for a stage victory. They are looking uh, in uh, 
The pound seats right now. Matthew Beers of South Africa and his uh, French partner, Jordan Saru. And he rode for the first time together a few days ahead of the Absa Cape Epic. They won the prologue and uh, they're now, having finished fourth on day two on stage one, are looking at a second stage win. We've talked so much about the importance of partnerships and cohesion. And this partnership, in fact, uh, on paper, didn't look very good because they're mostly unproven. They've hardly ridden together, certainly hardly raced together. And uh, one is a, a cross-country rider who's just come off a World Cup season, uh, an Olympic season. And the Matt Beers, having stayed mostly in South Africa, has had two two peaks for his season. He's peaked for Marathon World, he's ma sorry, Marathon uh, South African Marathon Championships. And uh, of course, the Absa Cape Epic is another of his big peaks for the season. So on paper, not a great match, but actually uh, on, the, on the road has certainly proven us completely wrong. Race village in the distance. We can see it. They can sense it. That's for sure. They can possibly hear it in the distance as they turn onto one of the uh, farm roads to come in to the uh, Saronsburg estate. It really is a uh, mouth-watering uh, opportunity for this pair to consolidate their hold on the yellow jersey by no means is it going to be a massive lead by any stretch of the imagination after three days but every couple of seconds every minute they can gain on their rivals is a minute that those rivals have to try and make up as the race uh, progresses and that's going to be an enormous task for them and uh, certainly assuming that the uh, 91 songo specialized team do win today's stage we can trace back the race winning move Earlier in the day, just before the uh, wagon trail descent, we saw Matt Beers move ahead of Martin Stozek on the trail just before the descent. And that was the decisive moment. It was perhaps the moment that Canyon Northwave lost contact with the race because on that descent, these two riders, the cross-country rider, Jordan Saru, led the way. This wasn't necessarily the plan. Matt Beers does know the trails better, but the cross-country skills of Jordan Saru certainly played into the hands of 91 Songo Specialized and distanced the Canyon Northwave to the relatively inexperienced Canyon Northwave team, uh, not knowing the trails and not having the local knowledge and also perhaps not having the skills of the pure cross-country riders and uh, having a lost touch with the leaders. And that was the decisive moment. And they are skirting the race village right now. They won't be celebrating yet. They'll want to be getting as many seconds as they can over their rivals. They know that every second counts. They're, but they'll be looking and thinking where we can hear it we can see it where are we turning where's where's the the finish but uh, a look again over from uh, matt beers to his partner jordan saru and perhaps now they can start celebrating because it's been another imperious performance they are really delighted and so they should be 91 songo specialized wins stage two of the 2021 apsa cape epic retain the yellow jersey a very very impressive ride by two high quality races on the queen stage of the apsa cape epic look at the light and here comes the world marathon champion andreas sirvold not far behind martin stosik his teammate they emptied their tanks to try and close the gap and they've crossed the line now and the gap can't be more than 30 seconds so a really really big effort by canyon northwave mtb to limit their losses and ensure that they will be in contention at the yellow jerseys will know that they are going to have to fight them all the way to valdeville well today's victory for 91 songo specialized was certainly a firepower victory uh, certainly the strongest team showing on the race but also a tactical victory uh, for them having made a great move just before the descent on the wagon trail and here we have the bulls bulls this is schneller and uh, urs huber very experienced riders here they will look to consolidate their having lost touch with those leaders those who were very experienced he and last time they raced in this region in sarensburg the last time urs huber went to sarensburg he was in the race lead he in fact ended up winning, winning with yeah. carl platt that year and so he will and I uh, think they won the stage in here he will no doubt um, i believe so we'll need to check those records go back but uh urs huber looking to consolidate with simon schneller
And uh, just an example of, of what, an illustration of what uh, being in the lead does to, 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 the, to the teams. They're definitely, uh, those, uh, these two, two riders are a lot less uh, intense. And, and you can sense they've absolutely emptied themselves. They're shattered at the end of the day. And there's that tinge of disappointment. We've, we've not quite done what we wanted to do today. But uh, they've come home in uh, third place. And then it's uh, Ravensteimer and uh, Poro, as well as Becking and Diaz, all roll across the line. Buff Scott, MTB, and Trek Pirelli in uh, fourth and fifth places. And we have access to the timing. We've just seen the, uh, the time gaps now with Jordan Saru and Matt Diaz being finished in just under four hours. Three hours, 56 minutes, and two seconds. And 26 seconds back. Uh, not the official results, of course. 26 seconds back, Canyon Northwave and 146 back are Urs Huber and Simon Schneller of the Bulls team. And two minutes from the leaders, we see Buff Scott and Trek Pirelli. 91 Songo specialized, Annika, again, uh, they've got it all right today. They really do, and they made their move at the exact uh, yeah, right time in the race. Uh, we saw yesterday they managed to open up a gap on the single trails uh, rather early in the race. Uh, wasn't able to maintain that gap, uh, was caught again, and then it ended in a sprint finish. But today they really, really knew when to put the pressure down towards the end of the race, and really perfected uh, that move kept a gap on the downhill, even extended that one. And once they got down and got to the flat parts, they really just time trialed and gave it everything to the finish line. And it's, it's energy well spent, because now they go into tomorrow with a, a even an even bigger lead on the, the GC. And it's, it's really every time you gain, if you're in the leader's jersey and you gain time on GC, it calms your mind even more and more day by day. Putting, uh, making a deposit into your account. 91 Songo Specialized. Three hours, 56 minutes and two seconds. 26 seconds back. Canyon Northway. Bulls won. 146. And Buff Scott and Trek Pirelli. Two minutes back. Let's head down to the finish. Liesel Fadovestesen is there talking to the uh, stage winners and uh, some of those uh, on the podium. Good morning from a very warm Saransburg. It's hitting a high of 26, but it definitely feels like it's 30 degrees out here. Congratulations, uh, Matt. Jordan, what a ride for you. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, it's, it's so awesome to win another stage. I mean, the prologue was good enough and um, wearing the yellow now to win in the yellow, I mean, you can't get better than that. <laughs> you absolutely can't get better than that. The wagon trail, tell me about that descent. Yeah, the downhill yeah, was well, yeah, super, super nice, and uh, yeah, uh, I enjoyed a lot to to be in front and push uh, to the limit the uh, the other team. So yeah, I struggled a bit in the in the beginning in the first uphill, and then I was better and better. So yeah, really happy. Did you think Matt's knowledge really helped and pulled you through today? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, he waited uh, me a little bit uh, at the beginning, and then uh, yeah, we were uh, yeah we were rotating and. Yeah, that was really amazing. Well, an absolute teamwork then. We saw you taking that lead just as you got to the down, downhill and the descent. Uh, tell me what was going through your mind right there. Well, I actually was off. I'm sure everyone saw. Um, I slipped on the, the ascent and then getting back was, was not pleasant. And then I just knew I, I had to get to the front. So I just bombed the descent, just railed the corners and then <laughs> was on Jordan's wheel. And I was like, OK, let's go, man. And then. Yeah, we flew down there. I think he obviously his pedigree in Exeter and in my my background in motocross, we could just send it. And I think we made some good time. And the last bit felt like a lifetime, but <laughs> it was worth it. It looked like it went very quickly. You, you guys made the absolute team out there coming in first today. Well done. Congratulations. And we'll see you on the start tomorrow. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Stage winners and the yellow jerseys belonging to 91 Songo Specialized, Matt Beers and uh, Jordan Sir. You can hear the excitement, particularly in Matt. He's, he's, yeah, I mean, he's living the dream now. He uh, has ridden this with his good friend Alan Hathaly before. But this is a very special experience to ride in the yellow jerseys and to win a stage in the yellow jersey. The yeah, it's jersey. a unique feeling. Um, when you're wearing the, the leader's jerseys, uh, all eyes are on you. 
your every single move will be observed and covered if, if possible and that they managed to actually pull away today is a, an amazing performance. Yeah, so probably just over two minutes their advantage going into uh, day three. So they'll be delighted with having uh, opened up a little bit more of a gap to Canyon Northwave, MTP, Zandia Civil and Martin Stosek. And, but looking at the way they rode uh, down, yes, they didn't uh, have uh, quite the, the speed of, of uh, Beers and uh, Saru going down there, but they held nothing back on the flats coming in. They were fiercely determined to try and close that gap. They are going to be contenders as this race goes on. There's no question about that. Let's head down to Liesl once again at the finish. Well, with the team from uh, Team uh, Canyon Northwave, guys, just before that peak on the 77 kilometer mark, you really gunned for it there. Tell me what went down. Uh, yeah, that was exactly the plan, like uh, push as hard as possible in the steep climb. And uh, first uh, we thought it worked out really good. Uh, but on the top, like uh, Matt Beers and Jordan Zaru came back. But it, it was the beginning of the down and then it was nice to have them in front because they know it very well and we, can, we could stay on the wheel quite a while. And yeah, but in the end we did not take the, the, the highest risk because we want to go for overall and it's still uh, five stages left. And yeah, so if we lost them, but very happy to finish in second. And, well, well done. It's only a few seconds, but those few seconds do make a difference. That final descent, just talk me through it. Yeah, we expected that it, it's rough and, and fast and dangerous because the Craig, our physio, he told us before because he, he knows the, this trace pretty well. So, yeah, as Andy said, the plan was to be uh, on, the, on the top of the climb to as, as much as in front as possible. So we did, but uh, the specialized guy was with us. Yeah, uh, maybe we were able to follow them in the down, but uh, they took maybe too many risks and we uh, we came here for overall, not for every stage. So we was like, okay, we have to stay calm and do our pace because it's if you crash, you crash only once in this downhill and it can, can be very dangerous. So playing it safe for the first couple of days, is that right? Yeah, of course, because the, this is the, I don't know, longest race. So yeah, you never know what can happen and you have to go to the finish at first. So that's what we want to do. Well, well done, guys. Looking forward to seeing you on the start line. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, getting those legs up and rested. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Martin Sorsek, Andreas Servolt. He made reference to Craig. Craig Kerber is there. Uh, physio is a man who's ridden many of these events and knows the trails extremely well. A very fine racer himself and uh, uh, partner with uh, Jenny Senar. So uh, he uh, will be uh, feeding them as much information as he can whilst restoring their legs to... Uh, racing condition for tomorrow. Well, Craig will be a great asset to the Canyon Northwave team, having had the experience of the race and uh, working with the uh, two essentially rookies of, uh, of the Absa Cape Epic. The Epic, as we've said, is different and there are unique challenges to it and no doubt that information is being imparted very effectively and uh, clear from the interview that we saw that Canyon Northwave are taking it, they're playing it safe. Um, Perhaps uh, on paper they could have played that uh, tactically a little bit, uh, a little bit different. They could have uh, perhaps not let Matt Beers overtake them just before the descent. That would have put a gap between. It would have separated the uh, the uh, partnership of Jordan Saru and Matt Beers, and they would have uh, put the team under pressure or at least held them back a little bit. But uh, it shows that um, just how tactical this race really is and that uh, they, they opted to play it safe and to follow the uh, 91 Songo specialized team on the downhill and um, it's all very well to talk and talk about theory and to, to go into the race with a plan but uh, in the uh, in the heat of the moment it's not always that easy no not at all you really have to 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 go by instinct and really you when you're out there in the race, you, you have a much better feeling of the race than what we see from here. And if you, you can feel somebody's fading a little bit, you, you have to take it into your advantage it, if it is uh, your opponent. Um, and if, it's, uh, if it is your partner, you need to really make sure that you get uh, him or her with you safely through. Well, we're over Sir Ronsberg here. Yeah, their first vintage was a Sauvignon Blanc back in uh, 2004. And, uh, 
The old Haynes is their winemaker. Learned his trade in Malmesbury, which is just over the mountains from where we are in the uh, Tilbach Valley here. But it is a special part of the Western Cape in this bowl of the Groot Winterhoek Mountains. And they'll be playing around here tomorrow on uh, Stage 3. We'll more about that later, but we're going to be focusing on the rest of the riders making their way in to the finish of Stage 2. To the Queen Stage, day three of the Absa Cape Epic, as we go back to our ladies' race. And it is 91 Songo Specialized, who are made up of Laura Stigger and Sina Fry, who are heading towards the top of the Witzenberg uh, descent and will be heading down the wagon trail in first place. Yes, um, so somewhere along this climb or in the flat sections, they managed to, to distance themselves from the rest of the field. And this is, this is a dangerous move. Uh, I'm sure that none of the other uh, ladies' teams in, the, in this race would want them, uh, the Team 91 Sango Specialized, to be on their own going into the final descent. Um, so a really good move again from these two ladies. Um, strong move. Race strategy, uh, these two, I mean, obviously the team will discuss it. You will uh, have, have had some discussions with them. I know you've talked about that, mentoring them ahead of the race. But on the bike race strategy, two young riders with not a lot of uh, stage race experience, but they're showing incredible maturity about the way they approach this, uh, this race. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we saw they had like a, a super strong performance yesterday. Today, it looked like they were playing it a little bit more conservative in the first uh, half or two thirds uh, of the stage. And now you can see again this this familiar body language that we saw yesterday, like they're pinning it, like they're going for it now. They want to, to extend this lead, not only to take the win today, but also to make, uh, make themselves uh, more comfortable uh, on the GC. Yeah, they came in with a 6 minute and 29 second lead over Salusmed, Ariane Luti and Robin Duchuret. And uh, right now they look as though they're consolidating that in a hugely impressive fashion as they ride along this really rough uh, Jeep track trail high uh, above uh, the Witzenberg Valley, which has these short little pitches as you're seeing now as they uh, almost uh, halve their speed and dig in to just uh, clear the summit. And then they'll be heading down the uh, wagon trail the central clear. That will be a sight to see as well. Yes, and they would know by now that they are very close to the summit. Um, always on the bike you have a tiny sticker with the course profile, so you know exactly, ooh, but it is tight. It is actually much tighter than what I thought. So that's why they're pinning it. They would be within a uh, visual distance of each other, the team Salosmet and the team 91 Sanko Specialized. We don't know when the leading team uh, made the move, uh, it could be quite recently, and that's why they're going so hard. It's not more than a 5, 10, 10 second gap, or maybe bigger. It's hard to tell uh, at this point. But still, being able to go first into this long, long, long downhill is crucial. And now they can really ride it at their own speed. They have a clear track ahead of them, and that's the best position to be in. It really forces uh, the team salesmen to, to risk everything going down that descent, which I don't think they will. Knowing uh, Robin de Hort and, and Arian Lutti uh, quite well, uh, they would make sure they get down that descent safely and think about uh, the, the, the rest of the race uh, in the following days. But we'll see. It will be interesting. We'll get an idea of the time gap as they go over that map there. That's a uh, timing map past the USN hydration station. And uh, now, very, very shortly, they'll be dropping onto the single track. The descent sort of rolls in now to the uh, pylons, the electric pylons. That'll be the sign that uh, the single track starts uh, descending. And uh, yeah, you would think that they would be able to open that gap on this descent, these two. but. Uh, yeah, the risks uh, are there. We know they are there, and uh, they'll be well aware of the dangers. Yes, and the team in 91 Sanko Specialized did not have to uh, fiddle around with the mechanical just yet, so they don't know, they don't have the experience having to fiddle with mm. the mechanical in these race conditions. So at that uh, 77 kilometer mark, that was the hydration point that they passed through. Marking pretty much the uh, top of the uh, top section of the route, just before the wagon trail, and 91 Songo Specialized reached that point in just over four hours and 29 seconds back. 
we saw Team Salismed in the chase. So those gaps, although they looked quite short on the camera, were large. They were very steep sections, deceptively small. But in fact, it was 30 seconds at that top section at that time split. So whilst these two have the uh, consummate skills of uh, high level achieving uh, cross-country riders, behind them, Ariane and Robin are two vastly experienced riders, both of whom would have ridden this uh, trail a number of times. Uh, but as we know, their approach, and Anneke, you talked about it now, they, they are conservative when it comes to this sort of uh, trail. They, they play the long game. It's all about getting to uh, Val de Vee in that orange jersey. And so, albeit that they'll know the trail and maybe have that advantage, they're not going to uh, overextend themselves in this. Yeah, so there's a balance between um, between those factors. The, the grand finale in Val de Vee Estate is, uh, is the final goal. But at the same time, they need to be uh, racing a little bit more on instinct. Perhaps they um, they, they can't completely look to the uh, to the end goal. They have to they have to be racing for the now. And you can see who definitely the riders who are definitely racing for the moment. 91 Songo specialized. We have to be fair to to Fry and Stiger. They are cross country riders. They are the best in the world, in fact. And their razor sharp reactions and their skills will be just by default and just by their racing experience will be better. They will be faster riders on the technical descents than the marathoners typically. So the, we talk about risks and we talk about reward, but it, the level of skill is definitely higher among the Songo Specialized team. We're watching our grandmasters come down here as well. Bart Benchens and Peter Vessel, the leaders in the purple uh, grandmasters category, the jerseys. We've had a change in the Masters because Carl Platt and Alban Lakata, we know, are no longer racing. A sad image of uh, Carl Platt sitting, crying on the road uh, in the Witzenberg Valley, absolutely uh, shattered. He had a stomach bug overnight and couldn't uh, refuel enough and get enough energy inside to uh, and food inside him to continue today. So he abandoned halfway through the stage. You see Brenton's racing in a full suspension bike. He's not, uh, he typically has been known to race his hardtail for all these years and uh, looks like he's very grateful to have suspension <laughs> at the front and the back this time. Yeah, there are riders riding full rigid single speeds through this uh, event, quite extraordinarily so. Max Menzies and Fennel Regu from uh, McGregor, so uh, we'll maybe have an update on them. Meanwhile, it is Sina Fry and Laura Stigger who are flying down this uh, wagon trail and uh, seemingly at this stage in control of this uh, race. Looking at the time gaps at that top point at the 77 kilometer mark, 91 Songa specialized ahead and following Team Salismet at 30 seconds more or less. With faces CST 1 minute 27 back. Lovely sound there of the brakes you could hear just uh, skidding briefly as they went into that corner. But the trail, I mean, it, it, as as rough and as harsh as it is, as it, is it has been uh, clear little because it obviously isn't a, a regular trail used every day of the, the week, so it does grow over. And particularly during this uh, last uh, winter, it's been very wet indeed, so there's been plenty of uh, growth over the trail, so it has been clear little to make it um, uh, visual and, and, and uh, rideable. It is a treacherous trail indeed, and, uh, and the more trails get ridden, the more uh, the more um, rideable they get. And uh, because it's such a remote region, um, difficult to uh, difficult to see um, difficult to see a way through if you mm. ride it when it has been a bit overgrown. We've ridden this route as a, as a rehearsal, as a dress rehearsal, um, just to test out the route and to test the feasibility of the route. And when we rode this descent, uh, it was way more overgrown way more difficult to navigate. And um, one thing that we did note from that was the wide open straight flat section where you can really go fast. Um, it's because of that, it's far more dangerous than you would imagine. And uh, looking forward to, ah, here we go to the podium. This is, uh, seems like Canyon North Wave. They're not absolutely smiling from ear to ear. It looks like a day is, uh, the day is done for them. And uh, third place, the Bulls. Urs Huber, he's won here before. Urs Huber and Simon Seller, they're satisfied with third spot. Second place, 
Canyon Northwave, Martin Stozek, and Andreas having a great effort today. And uh, stepping up onto the top step for the second time of the 2020 on APSA Cape Epic, the South African Marathon champion Matthew Beers and his partner Jordan Saru. Beers who rides for type dev nano time locally, and Jordan Saru who rides for the specialized factory team uh, internationally, but uh, they both ride the same bikes, uh, so that's why they managed to get uh, together and uh, they've achieved another big landmark a stage win here on the first big uh, or the first big marathon stage win for them together having finished fourth yesterday and uh, most importantly for 91 songo specialized defending and increasing their lead in the uh, overall standings the general classification so they will wear the yellow jerseys once again going into uh, stage number three of the absolute epic a morale victory for them too yeah. um two out of three and uh second spot on the podium canyon north where andreas sievolt and martin stozek are going one better than uh, than the previous two stages those of you who uh, have uh, been with us over the years watching our streaming thank you for uh, coming to join us on our on our coverage but uh, you'll notice not too many spectators it is uh, part of the COVID regulations here whilst we see the yellow jerseys once again on beers and uh, saru's shoulders after stage number two fantastic ride by this pair they are at the moment the uh, men in prime position to uh, see if they can win the absolute epic it, it, it's so long to go and so much can happen but uh, they're doing the uh, groundwork very impressively as are this pair their stable mates the 91 songo specialized women's team of uh, laura stigger and uh, sino fry Apps Africa Jersey leaders uh, Philip Bass and uh, Peter Detroit of Piger Eurosteel had a strong day today. I think they finished seventh on the day and maintained their hold on the uh, red jerseys for Piger Eurosteel. General classification sees that lead now over Silvalt and Storsek of Canyon Northwave. Two minutes and 13 seconds for Saru and Beers, Uber and Schnelle third now passing their stable mates fry and steve john four minutes and four seconds and the gap now a little bigger to uh, the bulls two pair becky and dia 756 Poron on ravensteiner recovered today had a much better day and they slowly but surely starting to make their way uh, towards the top five detroit and base 12 minutes and 49 down and base having won uh, four stages so he's used to being on the podium and also having been in the uh, well, the absa african jersey experience campaign of peter detoy having finished two absa cape epics yeah and that uh, is uh, significant because he's such a young man but uh, behind him four minutes and eight seconds it's a race for sure Tristan Nokia and Vessel Boerter type dev nano time. They are really, really talented young men. Uh, Nokia is 20, Boerter is 22. And then Marco Joubert and Tristan De Lange from Namibia. Another young uh, pairing from Mbuko Giant around the corner based in Paar. Seven minutes and 24 down. The Apps African men's jersey is going to be uh, an enthralling story as it unfolds through the week. Yeah, yeah very close match mm. between them. Very nice to see. More and more uh, African teams coming, and uh, predominantly South African, but uh, the Namibians coming into the, for the uh, fray as well. So as I was saying, it's a, it's a normally uh, a hustle and bustle and now uh, cheering the riders as they come across the line, but unfortunately due to the COVID regulations, uh, it is a spectator-free zone, the race village at the Absa Cape Epic for this year. Let's hope that uh, those restrictions won't be in place, we don't know, but uh, in, in March, because it does add to the, uh, to the atmosphere and the, the vibe. But nevertheless, uh, the riders will feel every bit of energy as they come in to finish the stage here at uh, Saronsburg, because today's Queen stage takes no prisoners. It's a brutally hard stage. Some didn't know it was the Queen stage. Well, this is why it is the Queen stage. As we look back at highlights of the men's race uh, from today, they rolled away from series. Ahead of them, 98 kilometers, 2,100 meters of accumulated climbing. 
mostly in the small little steps all the way through as they rolled away and I think from early on you got the sense that these riders knew they were in for something very very hard today also they had had the prologue and stage one in their leg so uh, just looking after themselves early on important team bulls just uh, leading it out the stage winners on stage one through Schneller and his partner Ush Huber and uh, this little climb didn't provide any difficulties for most of the riders however uh, you can see there Jose Ruiz breaking a chain as he tried to just put a little bit of power on his uh, pedals and uh, snap the chain shouting out to his uh, partner Vergara to come back and let him know that he'd broken the chain so first little mechanical coming very early on at probably the slowest time of the of the race so uh, they could uh, Fix the uh, chain, put the little uh, magic link on, and off they go. You can see that the Ruiz had it on his uh, on his bars. There, it looked like he was taking the little, possibly the little uh, little wire that holds the chain together whilst they uh, fix it, because it can be quite frustrating. Meanwhile, the race rolled on. They were able to regain the uh, group, and uh, it rolled on through towards the Heido Pass, which would be the first uh, serious challenge for the riders. It's such a contrast here, the wide open roads, the, the large bunch, contrast to what is to come, the rocky Witzenberg Valley and the uh, steep Heido Pass where they have to navigate. And all together now, at the beginning of the stage, this will all change as soon as we, as soon as the racing gets hotter and the trails get narrower and rougher. Significant there, BMC KTM, who had a wretched day yesterday with mechanical failure and losing uh, mountains of time, putting themselves on the front. Unfortunately for them, it didn't go according to plan. They weren't able to stay with the group all the way through today. But as the stage continued, beautiful images of the riders making their way through the uh, series valley towards the Gedo Pass here. You can see it stretching out and stretching out and slowly but surely the uh, inclines and the pace combined would take a toll on the, uh, the riders and groups dropping off and forming further back down the trail. Harsh terrain as ever on the uh, Apsa Cape Epic. The Gedo Pass takes uh, some riding and at the sharp end here Canyon Northwave showing their intentions today that they wanted to uh, at least have a say in the stage and also try to claw back some of that 1 minute and 47 second lead that uh, Canyon that uh, 91 Songo Specialized had going into the stage. In this section we can see the Bulls are leading, they're taking control of the race, they're at the front, they know how narrow these trails are, if the marathoners the so-called typical marathoners can keep control of the pace in sections like these. They know that it is to their advantage. In the back well, we see Simon Steve John. He had been struggling throughout the day and uh, throughout yesterday. And uh, no doubt under pressure once again, the second Bulls team member. He was destined to ride with Huber, but uh, they made a last minute change. And uh, Simon Schneller took his place to ride with the 2016 winner Urs Huber. Harsh terrain and wonderful trails created by Hannes Hanekom and his team. And they rode through the Hanekom farm at Welchmin. He and his brother Saki, part of this race, very integral part. They're riding their 10th uh, together and 12th and 11th individually. So wonderful uh, to have uh, the race traverse their farms. So the toll started to be taken on these riders. Ravensteiner and Aporo, as well as uh, Uber and Schneller and Becking and Diaz in this chase group as they made their way up the Witzenberg uh, Ridge on the far side. Ahead of them were Jordan Saroon, Matt Beers, the race leaders, and Canyon Northwave MTB. A little bit of a gap that uh, started to expand to from uh, 15, 20 seconds out to nearly half a minute as they headed up towards the top of the ridge and the wagon trail descent. The telltale sign of where the leaders were was the helicopter up ahead, which was bringing us these images as Martin Stosek and Andreas Sirvalt of Canyon Northwave set the pace on the climb. Key here, Matt Beers had uh, dropped off the group momentarily, working to get himself back on it as uh, we learned later on and important for the race leaders to try and get themselves 
into the lead going down the wagon trail descent, which is exactly what happened. The key moment was Beers passing first his Seervolt and then getting ahead of Martin Stosek to get onto the wheel of Jordan Serene. From then on, they headed down the pass at express speed. That was the chase group. Bulls leading the uh, pursuit. Ravensteiner and Aporo on their wheels and Buff Scott as well. But there was no stopping this pair of Jordan Saru and Matt Beers. This is where we saw the gap opening up just a little bit too much for too close, too much for comfort for the Kenyan Northway team. Martin Stozek on the front of the two and Drag Seervolt behind. And uh, the gap is just extending a bit. And as soon as they lost touch, they started to lose more and more time. It's just all that much harder to maintain that pace if you don't have the wheel in front of you. And on this very fast section and very dangerous section, it seems like it's wide open, but the trail is littered with obstacles, littered with areas or things that could really scup you, but absolutely no match for the 2020 World Cross Country Champion, Jordan Saru on the front with Matt Beers on his wheel. Yeah, Beers has experienced as a uh, motocross racer coming into play here as well. The uh, combined skills and talents of these two saw them put in uh, nearly 30 seconds on this pair, Seervolt and Stosek, a caught a glimpse of their quarry up the road as they headed towards Saronsburg, giving them a little boost, I'm sure. And then it was out of sight for 91 Songo Specialized. They were aware that the gap may have been closing and they were opening the uh, taps, but it was a race uh, for the ages here. Time trial for both teams as they emptied their tanks. Beers on the front and then Saru would take his turn for the finish, glinting in the distance at uh, Saronsburg and another stage win having won the prologue for this pair of Matt Beers and Jordan Saru who wore that uh, hydration pack throughout the stage and uh, that little advantage perhaps not spending quite as long at the water points would have played into their hands high fives for the 91 Songo Specialized team as they took their second stage win at Saronsburg in emphatic style but uh, these two men, Seervolt and Stosek, would have made them realize that they're going to have to work every inch of this uh, 620 kilometers if they want to win at uh, the grand finale at Val de Vie because they finished uh, just under half a, sec half a minute back. And Urs Huber and Simon Schneller emerged from that chase group to take third place. Stage winners on uh, the first day or first marathon stage. They are third on uh, stage three in Saronsburg. Now we're with the uh, leading women who've come off the pass and uh, now on the open roads uh, leading into uh, Saronsburg. It is Laura Stigger and Sina Fry again showing their incredible qualities here today. Yes, and you can see again how well they work together, taking turns at the front. And now Laura Stigger is at the front, uh, giving Sina Fry a little bit of a recovery in the wheel. So as soon as she recovers a little bit, uh, Sina Fry will be, be able to, to go to the front. Um, and it's just uh, all this, this long flat stretch after the descent is literally just a, a team time trial to the finish line. Uh, the descent has really torn the field apart. Uh, and you, you can see now they actually opened up the gap even more. At the top they had 20 seconds uh, to team Salosmet. And now they extended that gap to 56 seconds. So really, really uh, making it down there uh, in good style, being fast and opening up the gap, which give them bigger advantage here on the flat uh, team time trial area. I'm sure they had the power, the firepower to, to really be strong and efficient towards the finish line. But uh, if Team Salosmet were to catch up, uh, it would be here on the flat part. It's like a short track race for these two. They're absolutely hammering it. Uh, mm. Laura Stigger on the front. The short track world champion, uh, Sino Fry behind her. Amazing. Yes. And you can see they were riding really conservatively Oopsie. towards... Um, oh, yeah, here now Laura has to make sure, but she, sh she saw immediately that she uh, she lost Sina for a second there. Uh, just slow down, not forcing Sina to dig real deep to get back uh, to Laura. And the Grand Masters, Bart mm. Renschens and Peter Vessel rolling up onto their wheels now. But they will for sure stay out of the, the way of the, the two leading women. They have the respect and the, the experience. 
and our camera bike uh, on the e-bike is the uh, fifth rider in that uh, little group that's Stefan Sam I think it is so keep an eye from uh, close quarters but well this is just extraordinary from uh, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger I think it really plays uh, it shows us how important and how much of a difference those cross-country skills make on that descent one conventional wisdom would say that uh, Ariane Luti and Robin de Kroot, the lo having local knowledge of the trails um, and uh, and their descending skills would um, one would be surprised that uh, 30 seconds they've lost 30 seconds on that descent it's a so it just shows how skilled these cross-country races really are and how dialed in they are with their machines and also being able to ride these trails completely blind having never ridden them before so impressive performance on that descent to gain 30 seconds on team salismed i mean we, we are you know amazed at how well they're going and uh, how well they're doing but in, in on one side we shouldn't be too surprised they've they've done the homework they acclimatized they've done the preparation they've had the uh, the, the input from yourself, from, from everyone involved in the uh, 91 Songo Specialized team. So they are supremely prepared for this event. They are, but at the same time, they also knew that a lot of, uh, many people saw them at the, as the favorites going into the space and having to live up, up to that is also not always easy, but these women are highly skilled and, and very complete riders in every single way. And showing incredible maturity for two young, uh, stage race novices, so or perhaps a Cape Epic novices, uh, you know, has not finished but ridden the uh, Swiss Epic uh, last year, finished four stages and then had to withdraw due to illness. They sit in front of this pair of uh, the purple jerseys of Grand Masters leaders, Bart Brenchitz and uh, Peter Vessel. So they are closing in on the finish at Saronsburg. Just news in from the uh, final time check at uh, the bottom of the wagon trail. At kilometer 88, we have seen that uh, faces CST Mariska Strauss and Candice Law have lost three minutes on that descent. They were uh, more or less in touch with uh, Team Salismet. They were only a minute back. Now they're over four minutes back. So something must have happened yeah. to that pair on that descent. Yeah, that speaks of something more than uh, just going cautiously because uh, they are cross-country riders. They know the trail. So they may well have had something uh, go awry there. Confirmation of that. Uh, Neil has just uh, illustrated. So, pace is CST four minutes and eight seconds adrift now. Computer Mania MTB having a really solid day. Sheree Redeker and Adelaide Mora 524 down. The, yeah. uh, Computer Mania, Mania nearly team. caught on to the yeah. back of uh, Face of CST. Face of CST, to give you an idea, at the top of that descent, we're only one minute 27 off the leaders. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to, to hear what happened because it seems like something did happen, a mechanical or an issue or, or something. And I got, uh, we got a, a question on our social media here uh, asking about uh, tires, uh, tire pressure and sealant. And it really just shows that you need to be really conservative with your equipment in this race. Up for uh, um, harder, like more um, robust uh, casing on your tires. Uh, Tire pressure wise, in these races, I would always go a little bit higher than what I would ride normally in training or in cross country races. So, for example, if I would ride something like uh, 22 or 20 psi normally, I would go up to 24 to uh, 25 psi here just to have that little extra security to not get um, pinch flats in this terrain, which you easily get. And I know our mechanics as well, we're preparing our, our bikes well, adding uh, extra sealant into our tires, um, just so if you get thorns or anything in your tires, which is very likely in this terrain, um, you should not worry about losing sealant because you already had uh, extra sealant uh, in the tires. All of this, of course, makes your bike heavier, but in the end, it really, really, really pays off. So watch them in. One more from Paolo 94, Paolo J94. Would you ever race with a non-professional rider based on their skill set only? <laughs> uh, at this moment, I'm actually not thinking too much ahead. I'm just coming out of, of a long career as a pro rider. Um, and I'm enjoying taking a little bit of a break from thinking about racing. And for now, I'm really just letting the future come as it comes. And yep. if someday, 
I see an opportunity where I think like, hey, this could really, really, really be fun to do this. I'm going to do it. Um, but for now, I haven't really made any plans. I'm really allowing the future to be open for me. Yeah. So, Paolo, there's your answer. Um, for now, I think we heard in there and a break, which means there's going to be a start again. So the possibility is there. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you never it know. All you never That's know. Wonderful. But when, yeah. I s when I see, you know, the ladies yeah. here going fast and, you know, I just yeah. get goosebumps cool because <laughs> I know exactly this feeling. And that's that's what I miss, miss uh, most about racing. You know, it's so intense and you're so focused. And when everything comes together, it's it's hard to find that feeling anywhere else in life. Um, so it's it's certainly special. It's really special. Absolutely. Special watching these two, Laura Stigger and uh, Sina Fry, closing in on the finish as they pass through uh, the farms close to Saronsburg and the finish of stage two of the Absa Cape Epic, the Queen stage. And it uh, was uh, Laura Stigger, it was Sina Fry, at least, who, who said, this is the Queen stage at the start. She wasn't sure. She thought stage five was. Well, I think she may come out of the stage and say, OK, I get it. I understand why it's just the, the Queen stage. Very, very harsh terrain. And that's uh, what the uh, Hapsicape Epic is famed for, the terrain. Don't look at the numbers, the distance, the amount of climbing. Look at the terrain. That's what uh, really is the uh, telling factor. That's true. But I guess uh, <clears throat> these two women coming from the European Alps, they're used to judging uh, what's ahead of them based on uh, uh, vertical meters. And that's not always the case here in South Africa. It's really the terrain. That's what that's what you need to battle with. Uh, the many rocks, the thorns, the, the, the roughness of uh, the sand and, and just the surface and everything combined is really what uh, is, this is all about. Well, I think they've increased the gap to uh, the second place team when last we heard now this is a replay of them coming down this trail i was hoping we would see this here it is uh, the uh, leaders coming down the old wagon trail laura stigger and uh, sino fry this is their playground And this is a lot steeper than what we feel from here. You can see the tiny drop-offs uh, off uh, big rocks. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really tough. Um, sometimes what makes this race extremely difficult is uh, the dust. So it's, it's really dusty sometimes. You wouldn't be able to see the details of the, of the trail ahead of the, you. Here, now, today, vision is really, really good. But often as in the past, you would want to be at the front going down a uh, loose descent simply because if you were in fourth, fifth position or something like that, you wouldn't have vision, making it even more difficult. Yes, I think we, we can recall in the past, uh, 2016 and earlier years, when uh, the riders have come down here at uh, the tail end of summer in March at the uh, Absa Cape Epic and its traditional date, very dry, very loose, very dusty, and just this cloud, this stream of dust down, down the mountainside, and that uh, must be treacherous to ride into. Well, these two are very, very close to the finish at Saronsburg. Sina Fry and uh, Laura Stigger, and to their credit, the uh, Grand Masters, uh, Peter Vessel and uh, Bart Brenchens, uh, just holding off and letting them ride through. So this is the uh, basis CST team, Candace Lill and Mariska Strauss having to try and make up some time because by uh, our assessment and the time assessment, they've lost time on the descent off uh, the uh, Witzenberg mountain on the wagon trail. Let's try and see if there's any dust on their, uh, on their shoulders or on their, um, or on their shorts. Give us a clue as to what exactly happened if they have had a crash. Everything looks intact. They look like they're healthy. Their body language shows that there was no issues. Perhaps it was a mechanical. Could easily have been a flat or a, or a chain issue. This is normally the case when descending seriously rough terrain. And uh, it looks like everything's intact. Doesn't look like there's been any crashes. You do, just notice there, as they were heading into that right hand, uh, Mariska on the front, just a flick of her head showing right. And, and that's obviously to, to give Candace uh, an idea where they're going to go, but also on this sort of train, 
you know, on, on a road or a smooth road, you might even take your hand off to show you turn, turning right. You don't dare do that on this sort of terrain because it is so loose and unpredictable. So they're reading the signs as they pass one of the uh, men's teams. You can see they're making every effort here. They, they know they've uh, lost some time here and they're trying desperately to uh, ensure that firstly they don't lose any more. They stay clear of uh, what is uh, a very strong computer mania mountain bike team today. They are going really well, Cherie Redeker. Yeah, they are. They really recovered yeah. from uh, yesterday well. It's uh, going to be interesting to see if they can even improve more during, uh, yeah, during the, the race. Um, so it's still, it's still quite open to, for some positions. Stefan is with us. Stefan, they, this pair seem to have lost a bit of time on the wagon trail descent. Can you, uh, do, you, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened on the, on the wagon trail. Could have been, yeah, a lot of stuff can happen there. But yeah. at the moment, they seem quite comfortable and pushing hard together, working well. And also, cannot spot any, any weakness. I think we have to wait to the finish line interviews. It's been a torrid day for everyone out there, Stefan. You're sensing fatigue in, in, in the riders you've seen around you? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, right now everyone is on the limit fighting to come back. It's the last five kilometers for the African leaders' jersey now. But also already in the in the men's field, you, you've seen a lot of... Uh, yeah, faces that uh, was uh, like we're showing showing the efforts of today, the terrain and everything. So for everyone, it's a hard day out, and it's also getting warmer now. I think everyone's one will be happy to to take something to eat and drink at the finish line. All right, thanks very much to uh, Stefan out there. Sounds like Stefan is looking for a drink at the finish line. <laughs> Don't worry, Stefan, we'll have something for you when you get in. It's uh, brutally hard, it is. Uh, that was uh, our third place team on the, on the road in. And this is our leading team. The, the uh, 91 Songo specialized up there here are closing in. And you should catch a glimpse uh, fairly shortly of the race village as uh, Sina Fry and Laura, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. Keep the tempo going. Peter Vessel and uh, Bart Brenton taking the grandstand to seats to watch the leading women go about their business. Yes, Fr front row uh, seats for that. And you can see again how well the women here are working together. If you can catch uh, a gain two seconds here, two seconds there, it, that's that's really what makes a difference in, in this race. It all adds up and you should not underestimate that mechanism. It's all about gaining seconds here and there and most importantly not lose seconds here and there. And the spin-off of being in the front of course means that the rivals behind will be on the back foot and they'll be uh, they'll have that anxiety in their in, in their uh, in their psyche where they will be behind. They'll be pushing just trying to push just a little bit extra to try and catch on. Whereas when you're uh, a team who's in command of the race, it's a lot easier, um, just from a mindset point of view, to stay out front, and uh, from a motivational point of view too, to are very working very well together. Laura Sticker just takes a chance to look to see where her final destination is in Sarensburg. This is a, an extraordinary performance by uh, two young riders. I mean, we'll keep talking like this because uh, it's difficult to see them not continuing you know, to, to, to produce this sort of thing but I mean they are these are very young um, riders of the highest caliber but uh, bringing a maturity bringing a, a strength obviously they've got depth and skill that uh, likes of which very few riders have in the world but it really is a massively impressive performance it's I'm really positively surprised by how well they're going it, they're riding like a team who, who has the experience of have a, have, having done it before. It really looks like that. They look composed, calm, like every single move is, is very calculated. It's not haphazardly. It's very, it's very much in control. It's, um, it's good to watch. And for every time they do well, every time they can win a stage, you know, it's, it takes the pressure off. You know, they are more and more comfortable in that lead. And also it will be more and more demoralizing for the, the other teams, like knowing, okay, 
these two women, they are, they are strong on all sorts of terrains, all sorts of distance. What can we do? They need to really think hard. How should we, what can we do to beat these two? Because they're, they're going really well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, Sina may have ridden longer than this uh, at the Swiss Epic, but on a race, in a race situation, I, d I wonder whether Laura has run, uh, ridden four and three quarter hours. Yeah, and that's actually the the the, the, the big unknown in yeah. this is like, because we can see they're strong, we can see they're working well together, but how are they feeling on day four, five, six? Will it start to 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 hit them by then? And that's that's a big unknown that we do not know yet, and that's the only weakness that I can see. And here is Robin de Kruert and Ariane Luti, the uh, second place team, Salzmed chasing for all they're worth to try and shut down uh, the gap or limit that uh, that lead. We saw our Ed Luti struggling on that last climb before the wagon trail descent. It looks like she's taking, uh, letting Robin de Kruert set the pace, riding in her slipstream. It will be interesting to know if she does take a turn at the front. Maybe the case of her having a bad day and uh, relying on Robin de Kruert to set the pace. It all depends on, uh, it all depends on the teamwork now to get them to the finish. They were just under a minute back at the bottom of the wagon trail descent. And they'll look to consolidate that because overall on GC after stage one, they were six minutes and 29 seconds, almost six and a half minutes back. And today they're going to be losing at least another minute by the looks of it, by the looks of the body language from 91 Songo Specialized who are on fire at the moment once again, looking for three out of three. And Team Salas Med on the back foot once again. Uh, looking to lose another minute or so on the general classification. And our third team uh, on the uh, women's uh, race. Wonderful to have uh, cameras on all of them. This is Mariska Strauss at the back here and uh, Candace Lill. Looking untroubled, looking uh, smooth. And uh, they are, we last heard over four minutes back. So they are also chasing hard to try and limit their losses and, and stay clear of the computer mania pair. Adelaide Morath and uh, Shiri Riedeker. Just to recap, the computer mania pair at the bottom of that descent at kilometer uh, 88. They were five minutes 25 off the leaders and uh, one minute, just about one minute 20 off this team here, team faces CST. A plaster on uh, Mariska's uh, left uh, arm just below the elbow. That's perhaps a legacy of her fall yesterday. And uh, that cost them a little bit of time at the latter stages of the stage into series. On the final run in now, this is 91 Songo specialized. Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. There's such difference in their, their cadence there. Spinning it yes. uh, is uh, Sina. Yeah, it's really a, a personal preference. Yeah. Um, you can feel what cadence you need need to go, but yeah, you can see a, a difference here. It's not something that I would uh, put too much uh, importance into. It's really very, very, very unique for each rider what feels the most comfortable. Yeah, and it, uh, they, they're matching each other, and that's the, the most important factor is that they. Yes. Uh, uh, stay together and there's no problem at all with that they've done that they've hardly been more than a bike length apart for now near on three stages in uh, the 2021 APSA Cape Epic and this is a fantastic moment uh, as a racer you know you've done all the hard work you have almost five hours of really rough riding behind you you know you you had a plan you executed and you're about to win another stage. This is this is a very unique feeling, and these two girls, I can assure you, that they're going to be so happy, so delighted, and probably also very tired when we hear from them after the finish line. And uh, so they should be, because they put in a massive effort today. Laura Stigger and uh, Sina Fry about to make their final couple of turns into the finish here at Saronsburg. Uh, stage two, the Queen stage of the APSA Cape Epic. They'll go past the tents, don't worry. They won't be staying in one of those tonight, I'm sure. But uh, they'll be so tired they wouldn't notice if they were. It's uh, a ride of the highest caliber once again by the 91 Songo Specialized team. They head into the finish shoot now. 
Laura Stigger and Sina Fry, winners of stage two, the Queen stage. Three in a row for 91 Songo Specialized as they take a firm grip on the women's race. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic performance, yeah. It's good to see and hear. We can see they're reunited with their team. Uh, the team doesn't always know how the riders are doing out there. So seeing your riders coming across the line, being well, have done well, it's, it's also a big relief for the, and a fantastic feeling for the staff. Yeah, I've been standing on finish lines waiting for teams and you look at the team staff and they'll ask you and you'll ask them and well, we haven't seen them. We don't know where they are, how are they doing? So uh, a bit of tension there. Now, the gap uh, is back to this pair, Ariane Lutier and Robin de Kruert of uh, Salusmed, second place on GC and second on the day. And uh, they've done really well over the last 15 kilometers to try and limit that gap. Ariane on the front here for a while, we had Robin on the front, and they'll cross the line in second place. Team Salusmed, Ariane Lutier, Robin de Kruert, second on the Queen stage. And uh, they will be second on GC as well. Another huge effort by this vastly experienced pair, the Swiss marathon champion and the multiple South African marathon champion, Robert de Kruert. A great, great effort and a wonderful camaraderie and uh, emotion between the two. Uh, they know they've suffered, they've put everything out there, they've done everything they can on a day in which the 91 Songo specialized team have prevailed once again. You can see they still have a very strong bond and uh, good camaraderie between them. And uh, we'll just be able to hear from the interviews uh, just how much Ariane Nuti was suffering. We saw her distance on that last climb. Keen to see exactly how much that played a role in their performance today. Finishing just over a minute back of 91 Songo Specialized. They managed to hold that, well, the disadvantage, they, they held that gap. And well on the flat sections leading into the finish in Sarensburg. And face a CST, we haven't seen any time checks since they reached the bottom of that section, but they, at the 88 kilometer mark, they were over four minutes back. But they seem to be gelling well together, riding within themselves, taking turns at the front, and uh, hoping to consolidate yet another day in their Abs African leaders' jerseys. Up front is uh, Candace Lill, and uh, she's the current cross-country champion of South Africa, also the time trial champion uh, on the road of South Africa, and had a really good race on the road at the Cape Town Cycle Tour a week uh, or 10 days ago, and Mariska Strauss is the rider behind her. These two have been riding on the World Cup circuit all the way through the year, and uh, they've been uh, fairly evenly matched because one would finish a few places ahead of the other one week and then it took the other way around the next week so you would expect they would be very well matched and indeed they're proving to be on this uh, absolute epic and we expect them at the finish in two or three minutes time not long to go for the all south african pair we have been waiting for many years to see this pairing uh, team up uh, it's the to many fans it's almost been the obvious pairing and uh, it's an exciting, uh, it's exciting to see them uh, actually get together and race. They're very evenly matched and uh, great camaraderie between these two riders. So Strauss on the front there, just uh, putting the last couple of hundred meters uh, to bed here on uh, stage two of the uh, Absecape Epic. It's all about recovery in this uh, event and how quickly and how efficiently you can uh, recover ahead of the second day to take you deeper and deeper into uh, the uh, race here as they uh, are on to the uh, field at uh, Saronsburg. Got a men's team with them and uh, Stefan Sam rolls uh, off them as Mariska Strauss leads them home. Strong performance uh, by these women today. Uh, they managed to, to hold off a uh, computer mania uh, in fourth place, uh, not being caught, um, sitting comfortably in, in third the whole day, and uh, strong performance here. Just back to finish and cross the finish line here. Little flick of the head again from Mariska Strauss as she and Candace Lill of uh, Faces CST bring it home in third place on stage two, the Absa African jersey leaders and that jersey will stay on their shoulders uh, well ridden by the two south african riders let's go down to the finish liesel has got uh, some of the riders with her
with Sina and Lara. Congratulations, taking uh, the number one spot again in the women's category. Sina, this morning when we spoke, you weren't aware that this was the Queen's stage. Do you think it was justified now that you've climbed off the bike? Um, yeah, it was like a really cool stage and like we really enjoyed it and it was a really cool one. <laughs> and tell me about the attack just before the cli just before you got into the Witzenberg Valley. Yeah, um, we set the pace high directly after the water point and then, uh, yeah, we just keep going and then uh, we maybe, yeah, didn't thought that it's going so long uphill, but it was quite good for us. Um, yeah, we keep the pace high and had a safe downhill again, and we are completely happy to, to take it. Well, congratulations, guys. Go and enjoy your victory. Thank you. See the prior, Laura Stigger, stage winners once again at the uh, 2021 APSA Cape Epic, taking the Queen stage today and solidifying their hold on the overall race leaders uh, jerseys and uh, that pair Candice Lill and uh, Mariska Strauss uh, Candice's husband Darren alongside in support of the team who's a former winner of the uh, Abs African men's uh, jersey uh, at the Abs Cape Epic so knows exactly what they're going through well ridden by the computer mania pair Adelaide Morat and uh, an exhausted Cherie Redeker They've yes. emptied the tanks. Looks like they had a rough day out. Uh, understandably, this is rough <laughs> terrain. And you, you can see she was just crawling off her bike, finding some shade, just relaxing straight after finishing. And I, I know this feeling. That's yes. all you want. Yes, just absolutely. <laughs> a minute and one, uh, two seconds, the gap back to Salusmed after, or on the stage. And faces now 4.35 on the stage and Computer Mania 6.16 back on the stage. Just a testament to how strong the 91 Songo Specialized riders are on the flat on the wide open roads. They're able to not only just maintain a gap that they created on that downhill, but also to extend it slightly. A uh, little extending it slightly on, uh, on Team Salismet, but uh, quite extensively on Faces CST and the Computer Mania team. Which, which is impressive because they're both like very small riders and sometimes when you're that small you, your favorite or the terrain that suits you the best are the steep climbs so it's really it just shows how complete riders they really are being smaller riders but still having the power to really push it uh, on the flats and especially going on you know, towards the, the fifth hour in a really rough race it's impressive an immaculately laid out race village awaits the riders uh, at uh, Saronsburg it's uh, the fourth time we are returning to this beautiful venue or to Tilbach and uh, not since 2016 have we have been at uh, Saronsburg and it is looking absolutely spectacular at the end of a rainy winter let's head down to uh, Liesel at the finish quite warm here on the finish line ladies refreshing yourself with some water saying it's quite nice tell me what happened on that final descent um yeah flattered <laughs> not much else to say no and probably just didn't see a rock and yeah head through there was, there was tell me about those trail surfaces yeah i mean riding in the tankua Kuru is always very very rocky and rough terrain um and you start really feeling it towards the end of a stage as well like it's whole body kind of fatigue um, so you really have to keep concentrating um, and yeah a rock got the better of us on that final one and the leaders how were, was it just seeing them ahead of you and you knew you had to just keep pushing to stay there yeah it was good I think we paced ourselves really well um, consistency is the name of the game I think so there's still more racing to come but yeah I think we we did a good job of maintaining and limiting the damage today and yeah race hard to the finish and how are you feeling after yesterday's two tumbles? Um, tender. I could I could really feel my hand on that final descent. That's probably also grip strength, not not hundred percent there. But yeah, I think we did well and looking forward to tomorrow. Well we look forward to seeing you out on the trails tomorrow. Well done, congrats. Thank you so much. It's well done. Uh, Mariska Strauss, Candace Lill at uh, the end of what was another torrid day. You could see, you could almost hear it in the, in their voices. It had been another hard, hard day. Yeah, and it really, like we predicted, 
the, the final descent would uh, be super important because if you, it's all about pushing it but not pushing it too hard and you're going so late in the race and the fatigue starts setting in and that makes it even more difficult to really pick your lines well and avoid those dangerous and rocks. The, and and you, you've spoken about it, I mean, the, the uh, 91 Songo Specialized have had a trouble-free ride uh, so far through the, through the race, uh, but that's how quickly it happens, a, a puncture. And you know, they're probably going harder than the other two, yet uh, that, that sort of thing can happen and, and uh, you get the puncture. The mixed in, the Virgin Active mixed leaders, uh, Sebastian and Laura Stark, again, another superb ride. I think they are the first team in, I'm sure they are. And uh, they, they're defending champions and uh, another fantastic ride by this pair. They know this part of the world very well. They are German, but uh, they spend a lot of time living in uh, South Africa. Sebastian working at the University of Cape Town as a researcher, so uh, they know it very, very well. They ride extremely well. Yeah, the the uh, that that uh, fine line between risk and reward of pushing too hard, of keeping the focus, letting it go, and uh, enjoying the trails. You know, all of those things come into play and. Uh, and then you get a little rock that gets in the way and suddenly your, your day is uh, turned on its head. Yeah, it's true. But if you are the team chasing the leaders down, sometimes you need to, to, to risk, a little, do a, take a little bit more risk, um, really trying to, to catch up wherever you can. So it's uh, different strategies here being applied. So the first uh, three women's teams are, or four women's teams are home and the men keep rolling in the uh, masters uh, and grandmasters and mixed are in. Actually, the, the masters uh, we haven't yet seen, but there will be new leaders in the masters category. The news today that Carl Platt, the epic legend uh, and uh, from the Bulls legend team together with Alvin Lakata, they're out of the race, sadly, due to uh, Platt having an upset stomach last night and not recovering sufficiently today. He pulled out halfway through the day, sadly, and he's out of the race. Marie Ravi and Haley Preen roll in, as do Carsten Bresser and Money Havens. Uh, talk about epic legends. The winner of the very first Absa Cape Epic, Money Havens, there. He did that with Carl Platt. He's on the left hand side there in the uh, kit of uh, Team Absa. And just ahead of them in the uh, Land Rover gear, uh, Marie Ravi and uh, Haley Preen. So well done to uh, those teams. Safe and sound, home at Saronsburg after stage number two. There he is, Money Havens, the Namibian. And uh, such an experienced uh, racer and rider. Lovely to see him back and riding and uh, racing. I mean, he has ridden a few uh, events over the years, but uh, he got himself into some decent condition for this event. And uh, he knew Carsten Bresser was going to make him work hard. And so uh, he wanted to be here as uh, strong as ever. The uh, colorful man uh, he is at uh, Money Havens. Let's go back down to Liesl at the finish. With Team Race Tonic, Craig and Andrew taking our lead in the Masters today. Did you pass Carl on the way? Um, no, we actually rode off the front quite early. Uh, we got a gap and we just put our heads down and kept riding. Hey? So, yeah, we just didn't know where we were. At. We knew we were in the lead, but we didn't know what was going on behind us. At the... uh, and tell me, what was the trail like on that wagon trail descent? What was the quality like? <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was rocky, so we took it pretty easy. Um... We figured that the guys chasing us were quite a way back, so we decided to not to take chances, to be a little bit conservative and just get it get down safely. So yeah, it was it was good. And the plans for the rest of the day, what happens next for you guys? Sure, well, uh, this is a bit of a dream come true. So just to win a stage, never mind moving into the leader's jersey. But I don't know, it's going to take a lot to process, eh? Well, I'll leave you guys to go process. Congratulations once again, and we'll see you on the podium shortly. Cheers, thank you. Congrats, guys. Well done. Family men, uh, chiropractors, Craig, and the financial services is, uh, is uh, Andrew, and uh, committed to uh, getting onto the podium at the Absa Cape Epic, and they've done that here. So they, it is a dream come true for them, albeit in, in slightly uh, disappointing circumstances in terms of Carl Platt having to withdraw from the race. But that is what uh, mountain bike stage racing is all about. Uh, you take your chances and when they appear. Jenny Stenhaag, the Swedish champion, and Amy McDougall have completed as a team fair tree roll across the line. 
in the women's race. We'll get the gap uh, that they have uh, to the leaders very shortly. So, beautiful day. It is very, very hot today. Summer is uh, certainly making its presence felt, we feel now. So, have a look at this. This is the women's stage two results. Sina Fry and Laura Stiger, four hours, 49 minutes and uh, 12 seconds. A minute and two seconds back, Lutien de Groot. And again, a conservative day. That, that's how they, they approach it. At some stage, as uh, uh, Annika has been saying, at some stage, the chasing teams are going to have to take it, uh, a risk. However, that might uh, present itself. Lillian Strauss in third place. Morath and Redeka have had a really good day. Tanya Rabi, uh, Marie Rabi, and Hayley Breen, the Land Rover ladies. 12 minutes and 16 down. And Jenny Stenach, you've just seen her and uh, Amy McDougall roll across for Team Fairtree. 14 minutes and 42 seconds behind. The stage winners, 91 Songo Specialized. Still as anything, no wind, gentle uh, the conditions. And that's a high risk strategy. Crossing the, trying to cross the line with a wheelie because uh, we've seen many a rider not get it right. And uh, this is wonderful to see our Exaro leaders. I'm not entirely sure that is the Exaro leaders, or is it? Luyan and uh, Lorenzo, I don't think it is. This is, uh, the, I think, the uh, change of life uh, riders, or is it the Exaro riders? We'll pick it up shortly. But wonderful to see them rolling across, uh, full of good spirit. It does evolve this uh, race and uh, I can tell you that that uh, team will be delighted with their performance today. Let's go back down to Liesl at the finish. I'm with Robin de Groot and Ariane Luti on uh, the finish line here, taking second place, ladies. Ariane, tell me about that last climb. What was going through your mind and how were those legs feeling? Yeah, they were definitely feeling a bit sore. <laughs> uh, what was going through my mind? Well, just keep pushing. I mean, I always think uh, in my head, attitude and effort. So I always try to stay positive and give my absolute best. That's a great attitude to have. And is it easy by day three or four to have that positive attitude just back in your mind the whole time? Well, you just constantly need to work on it. You constantly need to think what's going through your head. If there's a negative thought, I try to change it. And I can only give my best, so I'm just keep pushing. That's <laughs> and that's what you've got to keep doing. Uh, Robin, it must be incredible to ride with Ariane with that incredible mindset. And you have that exact same positive mindset as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, awesome to have a teammate that's definitely not giving up. Um, always giving everything and I think I think that's a cool partnership that we've got we both giving everything we got um, we're working to strengths and weaknesses working together making it work and uh, I know we're both giving our all and we are seeing that camaraderie on and off the bike with the two of you around the, the race village as well tell me about the conditions of the trails today yeah for me this is more my kind of thing I must say as often saying wasn't my vibe um, so this is really I mean it was superb out there I think uh, yeah feels like a long time since we've done the epic um, and yeah, just good to be back. Well, congratulations. And there you've heard it from Ariane and Robert de Groot taking a second lead in our ladies uh, this afternoon. So it's Team Salismid in second place of the women's uh, race. It's been a, a, a tough uh, couple of years for uh, Robin. Uh, she had a strong sponsor and then uh, that uh, they uh, withdrew um, during the COVID times. and. Uh, she had to really work and uh, with great support from family and uh, and uh, some sponsors to get over to the World Championships last year where she finished fourth there and then this year again. So wonderful that she's now uh, featuring right up there and chasing for the win here at the Absa Cape Epic. As, uh, this is our Exaro category leaders rolling across the line. Well, they didn't win the stage today. That uh, stage win uh, was taken by Tolo Selala and uh, Sassani Ndebele of Exaro PWC1. But this is the Fairtree Canada pair of Lorenzo LaRue and Luyanda Tobangunya 
who uh, were the race leaders. I think they'll retain that uh, green jersey as Exaro uh, leaders uh, going into stage number three. Let's go back to Liesel. At the finish with our first mixed team coming in, Laura and Sebastian, come into shot. Congratulations, guys. First of all, tell me about that tumble you took at, uh, was it the first water point? Uh, just after the second. Um, yeah, I wasn't actually quite sure what happened. I just lost my front reel and fell, but yeah, I think nothing's broken, so should be fine. We're still in one piece to tell the tales. Tell me about those trails out there, the conditions of the surface that you were transcending today. Yeah, it was really nice today lot of flowy trails enjoyed it really a lot and uh, definitely looking forward to tomorrow's stage it's going to be quite hot do you think today's uh, weather prepared you for it oh yes it was actually a good acclimatization acclimatization for tomorrow but we haven't actually really looked at tomorrow's stage we just go day by day so we see what's going to happen well congratulations go put those legs up and we'll catch you on the start line tomorrow well done uh, congratulations to the Starks and another family rolling across the line. Lovely day because it's Saki and Hannes Hanekom uh, who have just rolled across the Santa Cruz Masters. They uh, would have thoroughly enjoyed today. What a, what a day for them as uh, the uh, 2021 Absa Cape Epic took in uh, their trails in the Witzenberg Valley. Hannes' uh, farm at uh, Elchemien there. And uh, they finished, and this is how impressive they are. They really are uh, serious riders, and uh, they've uh, done really well. I mean, they're not racing as they used to. Um, they used to be very much in contention in the veterans' categories and masters' categories, but uh, they've come back to race together this year as uh, a brother pair and to become the first uh, pair of brothers to ride and complete 10 Absa Cape Epics. Impressive indeed, an impressive performance there. Uh, let's also remember that the local knowledge of the trails is important, and if anyone knows, these trails it's them they've uh, could be an instrumental in building them so the local riders the local mountain bike community can enjoy the uh, the valley and enjoy the uh, best of mountain biking in the western cape sarah hill and uh, vera losses live lapier racing our home in the uh, stage uh, two as are etna low and siraj abrams of uh, cpt cape town uh, Penince, Cape Peninsula University of Technology and uh, they've completed today just under five hours of uh, riding it's oh, it really is a, a tough day out today and these are the this is the sharp end of the field there are going to be riders out there for many hours still yeah it's really quite impressive uh, especially now with the, the heat uh, the temperature is really rising um, those last one or two hours are just as straining as maybe the first three or four hours of the stage, just because by now you're super fatigued and then added to it comes a lot of heat and you have to cope with it all. We're about to head to the podium for the presentation of our top three women's teams on stage two of the uh, Abscape Epic, the Queen stage. Yeah, and it certainly lived up to that uh, reputation. Yes, there are going to be some tough stages for sure to come, and that's what this Cape Epic is all about. But, uh, today designated as the Queen stage ahead of the event, and uh, it certainly challenged these riders, and it will be uh, challenging all the remaining riders throughout the rest of the afternoon. A beautiful day, beautiful conditions, but uh, the lack of wind uh, does mean that uh, the heat really does, the temperature does uh, rise as yes, the uh, teams walk up onto the podium. Robin de Kruit, Ariane Lutia, Team Sarismet, and uh, CST faces, faces CST, Mariska Strauss and uh, Kanda still up. As you can see, uh, Mariska's got some of the plasters from her fall yesterday, hurt her hand and uh, got through the day. Well enough, in fact, very well. As did this pair, Robin de Kruit and Ariane Luti of Team Salusmed. But no one could catch uh, this pair. Sina Fry, Laura Stigger, 91 Songo specialized. Three days, three wins, and a lead overall that is looking very, very solid at the moment. Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. Winners of stage two, the Queen stage here at the 2021 Absa Cape Epic. Impressive performance from the Olympic silver medalist and the multiple junior champion from 91 Songo Specialized. 
showing their class on the on the certainly on the downhill on the wagon trail descent. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they, if you you know, if people saying, well, who who are these two uh, young riders? Um, if you keep an eye on the uh, the World Cup circuit and uh, the Olympics and so on, you would have noticed that these are two of the brightest young stars in the in the uh, in the sport, and uh, they're in great form and. We've seen now that, that uh, the way they've approached the year, they obviously had to peak for, for uh, the world champs, and then Olympics was a key uh, peak for them, but they're still carrying that, uh, that shape and form through. Yeah, for sure. They had, like, they had a really, really busy season. It was uh, really tough uh, all the way through. They didn't have uh, a lot of time for recovery or, or breaks. So to see them doing so well here is, is, is amazing. Yep, that's them in the orange jerseys once again, and they'll take it into stage three. The uh, leading uh, pair of Laura Stigger and Sina Fry of 91 Songo Specialized. Really high class riding by a pair of uh, super athletes who are just uh, putting everything in place at the moment, have not put a foot wrong so far in the Absa Cape Epic. Confirming the results on the women's uh, race today on stage two, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger, four hours, 49.12, ahead of Ariane Luthi and Roman de Groot of Salusmed, 102 uh, behind. Lillen Strauss, 4.35 behind. They had a puncture on the descent of uh, the wagon pass, which uh, cost them time for sure. And uh, it's part and parcel of uh, mountain biking, particularly at the Applicate Epic. Marath and Reddick, Computer, Computer Mania, MTB, Land Rover Ladies, Fair trips, then Ach and McDougal in sixth place. General classification sees that lead of uh, 91 Songo specialized, specialized out to seven minutes and 32 seconds after three days of racing. That is becoming a significant lead. Luthi and the uh, will continue to ride in their own style and uh, take their opportunities later in the week. Lillen Strauss now 18 minutes uh, adrift. Marath and Redeker 23 down. Senach and McDougall repeat the top five, 35 minutes and 17 seconds down. They'll be in the APSA African red jerseys tomorrow once again. Mariska Strauss and Candice Lill of Faces CST. They hold a fairly firm grip on that one. Well, it's almost a 28-minute advantage that, that they have, but their, their ambitions will really be focused on staying on that podium. And even early, early this early in the race, they'll be looking at uh, going one step or even two steps off. They've still got ambitions for the overall win. And as the race moves on, then those ambitions will uh, will be readjusted, of course, and be keen to see what their goals are throughout the week. No doubt chasing after at least a stage win and possibly even the final overall GC. Well, this is a reflection on uh, the stage today, the Queen stage out of Series 2, Sir Ronsberg, 98 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing. And this a look at the women's race. If anyone's going to win this race, is going to have to, uh, they're going to have to deal with the 91 Songo Specialized pair because they are so far in imperious form. But Jenny Stenerhaag and uh, Amy McDougall, a former winner here, of course, Jenny in 2017. And uh, perhaps uh, she and Amy McDougall will also be targeting a stage at some stage during the week. A little indication from uh, Cena Fry, there's a wire down the trail as they made their way through the series valley and up towards the uh, Gedo Pass and uh, the Land Rover technical terrain. It was a very, very harsh day indeed. Coming down one of the early descents, uh, Ariane Luti getting out ahead of the uh, rest of the field. Good move from her. Her descending skills and her local knowledge of the trails. Despite being a Swiss national, she has spent a lot of time in South Africa. And she's also, not to forget, that she's aiming to finish her ninth Absa Cape Epic. Robin de Kruid, her partner there, just behind the 91 Songo Specialized pair of Stiger and Fry. They were heading down into the Bitsenberg Valley and onto the uh, very few flat, smooth roads in that valley. An opportunity to feed and drink and just uh, 
regather and then prepare for what lay ahead. And what lay ahead was still a significant amount of hard work on these uh, brutally tough trails. On the far side of uh, the valley, you can see that is where they were heading. And uh, these were the trails that they would have to be dealing with. And uh, they did so very, very impressively. Almost for the first time, we saw a Stigger and Fry at the back of the group. Um, but this was early on, and uh, there was a Masters team in the middle of that group. They would move aside and allow the top three women's teams who rode together for much of the day uh, through the Witzenberg Valley. Masters teams and then the 91 Songo Specialized team started to uh, show their faces at the front of the uh, group. There are four point. riders, four teams in that uh, in that group. The main four contending teams, 91 Songo Specialized, Faces, CST, and Team Salismet and Computer Mania, who are having an excellent race this week. Yeah, you can see riders today really having respect of the fact that this is the Queen stage. Um, it took a time, so it took almost uh, three quarters of the race before we saw some serious attacks. So a lot of teams playing a little bit more conservative to, uh, today. But once the show uh, got started, it really got started. So yeah, big time. Yeah, this pair of uh, Cedar Fry and Laura Stigger, they were on the front for a lot of the day, but they didn't uh, open the taps until very late in the day on the last of the climbs away from uh, the final water point at around 70 kilometers. And that's when they opened the gaps. You can see in the distance there, the African jerseys as they drop off, but Ariane Luti and Robin de Kruitz staying with them on the early part of the climb out of the forest. And then they would head into the more exposed terrain near the top of the ridge on the Witzenberg Mountains. And that's a Candace Lill and Mariska Strauss just starting to be distanced by the uh, top two teams. And then, yeah, they started to uh, show their skills on the descents. That gap uh, started to widen. Ah, that's fine, don't worry. Back to, there they are, Lil and Strauss. Dry and dusty terrain, although not quite as powdery the dust as uh, it would be in midsummer. A little firmness about the train we heard from our onboard cameras and our experienced riders out there, Stefan Sam, that uh, yeah, it's just a little more, little firmer the the, uh, the ground. This is uh, almost the moment where they started to really open it up. Laura Sticker and Sina Fry heading on to the wagon trail descent. The climb up though to that uh, is a relentless climb. It's not brutally steep, but it just increases in in steps. And we heard in the post-race interviews that Laura was a little bit nervous if they kind of started going. Uh, hard too early, but they managed just fine. Bouncing down at the uh, single track trail. This is uh, their playground. They love this sort of uh, trail. Traditionally, they'll be used to riding the World Cup circuit where they, they have a chance to look at the course before and they are riding, or they were riding this uh, descent completely blind. Uh, absolutely no problem. Still their skills coming to the fore and on the flats maintaining their advantage and heading into the finish, not losing a single second to Team Salismet on the flats. In fact, gaining another six seconds on the flat section, showing their firepower and taking the overall win. That's three out of three for Team 91 Songo Specialized. And for sure, this performance today really must have uh, boosted their self-confidence because they did really good. But also Team Salismet here, really not losing that much time to the strong team ahead of them, so they could be, they can be really proud uh, of their performance too. And as I see it, it, it's still open. They could really, they could still go for a stage win or yeah, go up the rankings. Yep, South Africa jersey wearers, faces CST, Lil and uh, Strauss having had a puncture on the descent, recovered and uh, fixed that. Managed to uh, limit their losses as they made their way along the flats towards Saronsburg. The race finish uh, and the race home for the next couple of days in the beautiful Boerland as uh, the uh, Absa Cape Epic returns after a well, nearly a two-year hiatus. It's uh, lovely to be back and racing again uh, with the Absa Cape Epic. It was 19 months ago that the uh, 2020 event was cancelled. In the uh, other categories, Virgin Actor mixed the uh, Starks, Laura and Sebastian continue to uh, dominate 
their category quite comfortably. Craig Uriah and Andrew Dubonage now the leaders uh, of the Dimension Data Masters. They won today's stage by 10 minutes and 25 seconds over Ratabas, the Estonians, and Brenchens and Vessels. We saw them coming home uh, with the women. They are still the leaders because they won today's stage by 4 minutes and 34 seconds over Bucher and Gerba with Heymans and Opressa losing a bit of time today, but still in third place. That'll confirm that, the general classification. As you were in the Virgin Act, a mix of the Grand Masters, but new leaders in the blue jerseys tomorrow will be uh, Craig Uriah and Andrew Dubonage of South Africa riding for Estonic by 24 minutes and 36 seconds over Müller and Bachmann from Switzerland with Lonte and Rotmetz in third place. That's how they stand going into day four, stage three of the 2021 Absa Cape Epic. The Absa African men's jersey standings after three days. The toy and base lead that very close to seven minutes and 24 seconds down to Mark Rebear and Justin De Lange with Buko Giant. Type Dev Nano Time are in the mix as well. Vessel Boerter and Tristan Norkia, young men eager to race and to put their names in lights. They've got uh, futures ahead of them uh, in this race, I'm sure. Definitely a future stars of the race, and uh, we all look to the South Africans to come up with a, eventually, a, we, we're hoping for an all South African victory at the race, and uh, right now it looks, uh, the future's bright. LaRue and Tobangunia, Fairtree, Canadel continue to lead the Exaro jersey standings, but they didn't win today's stage. Selala and Debele from Exaro PwC1 took the victory today. Pewa and Ngidi from FNB Change of Life uh, Academy down in the Valley of a Thousand Hills. Uh, under the guidance of the great Martin Dreyer, they are in third place at the moment for the Exaro category. It's a close competition there as well. Lil and Strauss, well, they are third overall and uh, Predictably, they are the leaders in the APSA African women's jersey standings. They have greater ambition, I'm sure, to try and win this overall. But Darabi and Preen in second place for Land Rover Ladies and Live La Pierre Racing's Sarah Hill and Vera Losa in third place. 36 minutes and 36 seconds behind them. Well, the finish line is quiet at the moment, but it will be buzzing and busy uh, through the afternoon as riders, the uh, hundreds of amateurs who've committed so much time and uh, energy to uh, preparing themselves for the uh, 2021 APSA Cape Epic will be looking to finish this Queen stage here at Saronsburg and then uh, recover as best they possibly can ahead of stage three because it is another very tough stage we call today the queen stage and you look at tomorrow 91 k's 2100 meters of climbing another really hard day yeah tomorrow will feature one of the the, the absolute toughest uh, climbs of the entire race uh, not only that that but also we have the same amount of climbing tomorrow but just crammed into less kilometers so tomorrow is definitely no walk in the park that it certainly isn't. I mean, it, the, the, the severity of the stage is designated, denoted by those uh, wheels down the bottom there. And today was a five wheel stage. Tomorrow's four and a half. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very hard indeed, Neil. It'll be hard for the riders for sure. And we're all looking forward to the, uh, the visuals on the bone trail. It's a fantastic scene, beautifully scenic uh, climb, single track climb up. And. Uh, Look forward to seeing some of those pictures from the helicopter on those sections. Fanti's Pass is an extremely challenging climb. And of course the descent off Fanti's Pass, then into the Hydro Point and another descent into Sarensburg. A beautiful loop circuit today, uh, tomorrow, and then of course another transition day after that. Absolutely, yep. This is it. It's the 2021 Absa Cape Epic. It is living up to uh, expectation and delivering uh, in every sense. It is uh, another true test. It's the race that measures all here. And uh, today's Queen Stage certainly delivered uh, great drama, great racing. And uh, through the afternoon, riders will be rolling in here and uh, preparing for the rest of the week. This isn't the only Epic Series event happening this week because the uh, Cape to Cape is taking place in Western Australia starting in two days time on the 21st. It's uh, 
Australia's uh, largest and longest uh, standing uh, four-day mountain bike stage race based around Margaret River, a beautiful Margaret River in Western Australia, starting at Cape Lewin Lighthouse and finishing four days later at Cape Naturaliste. Around 200 kilometres, 2,500 metres of climbing in total and between 34 and 59 kilometres of riding every day. Another wonderful event in the uh, epic series that uh, you might want to put on your calendar and explore the beauty of Western Australia. Yes, of course, the pinnacle of the epic series is the Absa Cape Epic where we are today. And uh, the epic series events provide an opportunity for the for riders to qualify for the Absa Cape Epic. But not only that, an opportunity to ride in some iconic mountain bike regions and uh, experience some iconic trails in each of those regions. And this is one such region here in the, the Tilbach, the Bowl, uh, the uh, Lanfani Vavren as they call it, the uh, Klein Berg River snakes away down through the Niverkloof and into the Big Berg River. The Breda River is on the other side of the valley and it is in this area that they'll race tomorrow on stage three for the time being though. Stage two has delivered great drama, fantastic racing and another dominant performance by 91 Songo Specialized. Thanks to Neil Gardner, to Annika Langfell, to Stefan Sam, to Thomas Dietsch and Isla Stowe out there. Until tomorrow, goodbye.